Hey, I'm Marcus. And I'm Nick. We are Working Class Nerds. Cue the intro. right we are working class nerds the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information today is thursday april 21st 2022 and you can find this 149 podcast on apple podcast buzzsprout google podcast stitcher spotify and anywhere you can find a podcast in the galaxy far far away you can also watch me terribly fail at legendary lost sectors tuesdays saturdays and Sundays at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814. You can watch me play video games every single Monday night at twitch.tv slash NickVern51. And guess what? We're both on Twitter. I am at MarcusB814. And I am at Nick Vern. That's N-I-C-K-V-E-R. And in this week's episode, we're talking with Freeride Games. Freeride is a Destiny streamer, Twitch partner, and has an epic, super amazing community. So thanks for coming on the show, Freeride. And what have you been up to? Everything everything we we are constantly busy uh in the free ride community whether it's guardian help whether we're doing charity events whatever the case may be uh between working a full-time job and streaming uh, I, I think it's fair to say everything covers covers the basis oh yeah the whole multiverse of activities <laughs> i'm telling you it never slows <laughs> down man breathing breathing comes second nature work comes first <laughs> yes oh let me Mar tell you marcus knows about that yeah <laughs> when you work full time and then you come home and then you got you stream for hours like by the end of the night i'm just like zombified that's how i know when it's time to turn off the stream when i'm just like Ugh. I, I wish i could i wish i could say the same it's you know if i work eight hours and i put another six seven hours after that um, I, I don't know what it is, man. I don't know if it's the energy. I don't know if it's just the excitement of it. And, you know, I've been I've been going for two years now. I'm actually coming up on my two year anniversary on Twitch. And as soon as I shut down, I don't know. I don't know. My brain just kicks in overdrive. And it sounds cheesy, especially after two years of doing this. But every day, every time I stream and I shut down, I, I'm just grateful for what I have. Because I see a lot of people that are a lot better streamers, a lot better gamers than I am. And, um, you know, we're where we're at. And I, I, to this day, I don't know how, but I know I give all my credit to those uh, to those that support me that are by my side. The community, uh, Marcus, I know you haven't been part of the community that long, but dude, just, I mean, you see the energy. Even when you show up, the community welcomes everybody in with yeah. open arms. And... It's it's a beautiful thing what they've created. They give me credit, but I I can't I can't take it because they created it. I'm just the face on it, and I think they could have found a prettier face to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always say that I have the perfect face for radio. Uh, that's what my mom said about me. Uh, Damn. And, yeah, you know, I was like, thanks. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but you have to like. I can only speak for Nick and I like we appreciate the nurse community so much because they come out day in and day out and coming into our streams, just saying hi and hey, how's it going means more to me than anything else, because they're taking time out of their day to ensure that they come and say hello. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then absolutely. and then you have your regulars that are always in there and always creating things, you know, example for me is tabs created the fail counter and everybody loves it because every i mean i can breathe wrong and they'll add a fail counter to it and <laughs> nice. it's just... exclamation point fail exactly right? and uh it's, it's great to have stuff like that that keeps the community engaged you yes. know because they can laugh at our failures but at the end of the day you know and i've i've had so many content creators in my dms you know how did you create the community and once again like i said a million times over it's the community that creates the community. It's nothing to do with the streamer. But right. at, at the end of the day, you know, you just have to appreciate and you have to let chat know. If I can give my advice to any content creator out there, it is never 
forget that these people could be anywhere else. They could be watching any other streamer. If you've got two viewers, right. those are the best damn two viewers you could ask for because they could be anywhere else. They could be doing anything else. They're with you. They're giving their time. I, I say it on stream all the time. Time is the most precious thing because you don't get it back. And they're right. giving that time to you. I, I can't agree more. Completely agree. <clears throat> You know, and I, I, I really feel, and I think that's where some, some content creators might fall off is in the beginning, they appreciate it. And then, you know, if they're not getting the growth or if the game's not, you know, popping off uh, as well as one would hope and, you know, they get those stagnant days, you know, you've still got 10 viewers, you've still got 15 viewers. Where's, where's that love for those still 10, 15 that show up day in and day out? You know, you gotta, you gotta show that appreciation because they can be anywhere. And if they're with anyway. you, yeah. And if they're with you, those are the best people on the planet. So, I uh, I heard you say you're coming up on two years. Uh, do you remember years? the day? I do not. Uh, I know I need to because uh, it's a day I probably won't stream. My community goes crazy on a Wednesday afternoon for no damn reason. The last thing they need to know is when our two-year anniversary is. No oh. way. That is a yeah, day that Nick, I... <laughs> Nick, we're going to find that out. Don't worry. Blow we're going to find that out. Yeah, we're going to blow that shit up. I, I, <laughs> I get so much help from chat to this day about me and and how I accept, you know, the love that I do get from chat. I'm, I'm awful at it. I'll admit it. I'm awful, dude. A gifted sub to this day, two years. I'm like, dude, thank you. That Hell $6 yeah. could have bought you a freaking value meal somewhere. You could have spent right. that $6 on anything in the world, yeah. but you gave that $6 to me. You you did 100 biddies for me. You could have done that to this day, you know? Yeah. And I don't know. When when there's big days, my birthday, whew, you know, there's just been some monumental things, and I'm telling you, I think chat's number one thing. It's not what we succeed. It's not the gold bars, which we call exotics in the Destiny world. You know, we call exotics getting yeah. gold bars. Mm -hmm. But I really think that watching me break on stream is still their absolute favorite pass a hundred percent yeah you know. that's uh, yeah i mean that's any twitch audience's favorite thing <laughs> to see you like their favorite streamer to break up oh. with like some crazy hype train you know what i mean yeah right, right. it's the best um this sunday is my two year congratulations Whoa. man let's go yeah see? I, well i you know it's crazy because we were growing so right much. Now. What? No, Nick. It. No. Yes, I am. This is top happen. secret. Don't do it, dude. You just told it on your podcast and it's top secret. It's going to air yeah, tomorrow. The time, yeah, but everybody's going to listen to the podcast next week. The thousands of people that are going to hear this are going to hear it next week. You They're really going to miss so. it. Yes. Oh, my boy Sausage has already got Twitter ready to pop off with this. So I... Uh... <laughs> You, you may be underselling that one a little bit there, Chief. Um, so anyway, so what I was saying is the um, – I get it what you're saying about the community and what I – the most memorable moments from the community are when they're in chat and they remember something you did six months ago and you don't even remember it and it all comes back. and. I feel like those are the the craziest memories. And that's why, like, anybody who comes in always gets a high five. Oh, yeah. I get so excited. I always say my tail is wagging a million miles an hour when I stream because I'm so excited that everybody is there to hang out, whether it's yeah. one viewer or 10 viewers right? or 20. Yeah. And that's at the end of the day, man. Like I said, you've got to appreciate the one. You got to appreciate the 20. You got to appreciate whatever they are, how many there are. And um, it's all about that. Yeah. yeah, we're doing a lot of pointing. Oh no, <laughs> yes. that's, that's that's our top it. secret code. Sorry, <laughs> it's a it's a very complicated hand signal as yes. to who who wants to talk about their week first. In oh, this case, gotcha, gotcha. All right, it's gonna be Marcus. So, Marcus, oh. how's it going, <laughs> and what have you been up to? Okay, there's a whole bunch of things, but first thing we have to do is thank Pause. Pause is a nerds community member. She is a Twitch streamer. Um, she made me an emo out of nowhere. Um, I got a message that said, here, I made you an emote and it is of a gray 
ghost grayish like metallic silver ghost and she put my logo right in the middle of it that was the kindest thing ever um i've never i've never had that happen to me uh coda made me like a pog face but like i never had somebody take my logo and do something with it you know what i mean just as like a a kind gesture yeah kind gesture Yeah. yeah and so I've had two emotes made for me. Um, it's so cool. And now I can use it in everybody's stream. And it's also al- almost becoming like the welcome emote. Right. Yeah. You know it's what I mean? The, because it's, it's my the- logo and the, and the ghost, because I've been saying for a while that I got to do a couple new emotes just to handle some of the changes. Yeah. Um, but anyways, shout out to pause. Thank you so much. I did. So I've had two awesome weeks in Destiny where I've done two raids, or maybe it was like over the course of three weeks. I'm not sure. But anyways, I've done two raids that I've never done before, and I think I've done them all for Destiny 2 now. Okay. Um, Free Ride here was the first person to take me into Garden of Salvation, which I've talked about. But after doing that, I really wanted to finish all of the raids. And after having Tom Tom TV on the podcast... He was like, dude, let's do it. So we did Last Wish last week. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry to laugh, but you go from Garden to Last Wish, and it is it is grapes to concrete. Like it is, it's not even a food group anymore. Last Wish will sit you down really quick. It will humble a person. Oh, I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Like, uh, I, I just... You know, like, so the first encounter, you go into this room and they have, and you have to like stand on plates and do all the things and match the codes. That almost reminded me of Vow of the Disciple with like all the symbols and stuff, obviously different mechanics, but like, I was just like, okay, this is pretty cool. But then the rest of the encounters, all of them were just meh to me. Like right. nothing like, um, like, uh, how about this? There was a point in Garden of Salvation, and you referred to it as Dance Dance Revolution, where I had <laughs> yeah. to, like, stand wherever, like, the the line to this moat was going, right? right? I found that mechanic more interesting than the entire Last Wish raid. It's the name. It's the name. It's all it is. Dance When you hear Dance Dance Revolution, you're just uh, like, yeah, this is it. This is the epitome of gaming right here. Even if you're just standing on a small circle doing a divinity puzzle, you're like, yes, oh what God. it's all about. It's well, just and to <laughs> just I'm the a flood of memories of, uh, you know, teenagers with questionable hygiene habits, like dancing in the arcade. Did I just get called out? I feel like I got called out. That's fine. It's it's all right. It's whatever. Listen. Yeah. It's, no it's way. Okay. We can move on. I was, yeah, there, it, I was there too. I was yeah, playing it's okay, the- Chad. Don't worry, Chad. We got it. Um, <laughs> so... Wait a minute. The the audio people don't know. Well, anybody doesn't know that I'm wearing. Nick a has a hat. hat on that's backwards, and he looks like a Chad. Just saying. Yeah. Baby Brad. But yeah. anyway, so um, but I think too. Last wish isn't is pretty as Garden of Salvation. And I will say this: I think in Garden of Salvation, there were a lot of moments in that raid where, like, I was like blown away, and there was like remember like memorable moments like marcus you have to follow my my gamer tag to find this hole to jump in okay i made the jump we went crazy then there was another part where we like beat like this like little like looked like a harpy it's like a little like flowery robot floating enemy right nick but we beat it and i was like all right are we all done and everybody just laughed at me. <laughs> I'm like, no, we're not done. I was like, okay, well then that's just part of the boss fight. Great. Yeah, that was yeah. that was the eyeball boss. That's right. Uh, yeah. Which which is a very complicated. And one thing I will say, a lot of people are completely um, opposite of you. They do not like garden. A lot of people struggle hard on garden because it's so mechanic based. But that's one thing I've always uh, proud been prideful on is the fact that i'm very good at explaining in simplest terms hey i need you to do this 
and then this is going to happen and then do this. So if you've got people that don't explain something very well, it's going to go sideways. You're not going to have fun. And, and that's what it boils down to. And it, it's rough. It's rough because I, I love garden. I love the, the complexity of it. I love the challenges, the mechanics of it. It's, it's a definitely not a stay in here kind of fight. So but, I was going to say, go ahead, Marcus, Nick. I feel like you're a lot more used to mechanic heavy raids anyways from Star Wars Old Republic. I feel like most of those boss fights are pretty, really mechanic heavy. Well, you know what's so funny, Nick, you say that is as I do these destiny raids. Now, granted, Garden of Salvation 100% carried. Okay. Yeah. No. Like no. I was carried. No. I like I killed the things that I needed to kill, but I was carried. You can't yeah. be you can't be carried in that raid. That's one thing I love about it. If you're if you're guarding a post you are guarding that post. There are three other people that are guarding a post to make sure nothing sacrifices. Can't carry you there because I've got to go guard my own stuff. Yeah, but I feel like if you're in a raid, you can handle guarding a post. You would be surprised. You would you be can... <laughs> you'd be blown away. <laughs> All you gotta I'm not do is sh- say names, but <laughs> <laughs> All you gotta but do they're... is shoot the bad man, right? Right, yeah, exactly. You... Like you shot the ouchy boo boo guy before the boo boo ouchy guy shot you. It's the, it's a win win. But exactly. right, but, but the encounter saying, after the encounter after that, you had to pick up moats. You had to pick up the correct amount of moats. A lot of people miss moats. You didn't. You deposited moats. You defended the bank. You did the damage to the boss in the boss room. You guarded your bank, made sure nothing sacrificed. I think we won and done that boss. Yes, if I did. remember correctly. Yes, damn. That is not a carry type raid. It is very mechanic. When you throw mechanics in. You don't carry people. People have their jobs. Well, so say what you want, but carry. Eh, as, okay. uh, so, so my point is, okay, so here's, here's the point. I want to go back to it. Well, I really badly want to go back, but I want to go back at a point where somebody can say, okay, Marcus, you're going to do this job. Because as I play, I don't want, I don't want to suck. Right. And and I'm not saying that I suck. I'm not the best player, but I want to I want somebody to be able to say, "Okay, Marcus, um oh, like in Vault of Glass, I'll give a perfect example. The oracles. Like I want to learn how to do that. I want to be the one to go through it, kill that thing and bring that thing back. You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. And understand that oh, left back and we're Mercury or Mars, whatever it is. I want to learn I want to learn the job so I can become a better player. Of course. Right. So that's that why it should be the end game. When, when people come in, I, I've actually scared people off because I, I always say the same thing. We don't do carries. We do helps. We do training. I want to train people. I don't want to carry you. I want to teach you the mechanics so well that you go on and teach your friends, your clan mates, your absolute strangers. Hey, I'm looking for somebody to help me with Vault of Glass. Dude, I know that. Free Ride Games taught me the mechanics for that. I've got you. I'm coming in. And I've had so many people come in and chat and say, hey, Free, because of you, because of your captains teaching us how to do this, I was able to help my entire clan get this W. You know how good that feels? Yes, and that's what I mean. Like Vault of Glass, the, uh, you have to like run into these certain spots in certain times. Um. I don't know. You jump really, really far down and it's before you kill. I don't know what they're called. Well, you've got gatekeeper, you've got Templar, you've got Atheon. The, wait, at, gate, at, at gatekeeper, where's the ones that you have to like run through the it, like timing, the things like light up in certain spots of the map? Uh, that's actually Oracles. That's before Templar. Yeah, Oracles so that's is right before talking. Templar. Yeah. That like stuff like that. That's the stuff I want to learn. It'll right. just make me a better player. So in the meantime, um, last Saturday night, I I really didn't want to finish doing weeklies. I didn't want to do a raid. I just wanted to play the game. So I decided to do start doing legendary lost sectors, which I'm a terrible player and I'm always playing with people. So I'm like, I'm going to put myself to a challenge. Well, the, the stream thought it was hilarious because I've never did this legendary lost sector. And let me tell you, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> I died so much. You don't, people are you... like, Oh, they're like, Oh, you got to switch to a, um, 
Uh, you got to switch to the pulse rifle because it'll break that shield. Oh, right. but wait, you got to switch to this other gun because it's going to break this other type of shield. And at one point I did this. I just put my hands up and I died and I said, okay, I have no fucking clue what everybody <laughs> is talking about. So right. I left the lost sector yeah. and I read about it and like, oh, this has, I don't even know what they're called right now. Cause I'm, it's on the we spot. I, I never Barrier and like what's the I've other I've never one? been okay with somebody, you know, and, and I'm sure like 90% of what you're saying is being playful. You know, I get that, but I've never been one to allow people to put themselves down. You're either experienced or you're inexperienced. There is no sucking. You've either done it or you haven't. You either know what you're doing or you don't know what you're doing, but you don't suck at something. You're either experienced or you're not. And all right. All right. Oh, so we have a thing in this show that Nick and I <laughs> tell each other to suck less all the time. Oh, always. So, <laughs> so, so when I, I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean, right, right. I, I, I need to not I suck. I need to not suck, which is my way of saying I need to learn. So, yeah. So I actually did it again. And like, so I ended up beating this legendary lost sector. I beat it a few times. And then the next day I played, well, guess what? Different law sector. It was a different law sector, <laughs> and I got my fucking ass kicked. I got through the first room, and I was like, I made it. But then, but it was the scorn, and the scorn are probably the worst enemies because they throw things at you, yeah. and then on all the champions or whatever the hell the but boss or uh, medium bosses, they they spawn these things that eject AOE attacks. And you're like, and you can't even like hide behind cover because they're throwing these fucking grenades at you that explode these AOE attacks. And it, it was just awful. But come to find out, I didn't have, it wasn't the over, what was it? Bar not barrier, overload. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't unstoppable have. Unstoppable and barrier. Yeah. So it, I had the unstoppable, but one of them had an arc shield on and I didn't have an arc shield breaker. So I had to do that. I have no fucking clue what I'm doing. But. But this Saturday, I'm probably going to do that because I'm super excited to get back into the legendary law sectors to try to learn how to play better. Um, I think I did a couple of legendary law, or maybe not legendary, but I no, you probably sectors. just did the regular law sectors. Yeah. And I got destroyed. And then yes. two people came in that were like, well, I don't know if I'm level 15 or 20 or something. They were level like 130 or 40 and like very clearly knew what the hell they were doing and then helped me. But I was just like insta death, insta death to like ads, like no, like regular. Yeah, it's enemies. I do understand with what you're saying. So for me, I'm learning. It's awesome. Um, as always, everybody, uh, thank you for watching my stream. Thank you to <laughs> all the new follows. Thank you so much for the generosity this week has been really special for me in the stream because like I feel like I'm finding my groove again from making the switch from Swotor to Destiny. And after all this time, like I feel like whole again. Like I feel like when I'm clicking go live, I get so excited just to be able to give everybody a high five or just talk with everybody. And it like I just want to give everybody a hug. You know yeah, what I mean? Um, absolutely. It it makes me really fucking happy. Um but I did end up – so because I'm waiting for the raid in SWOTOR to come out, I need a second game to play. So I updated Final Fantasy XIV, and I actually played with Doc um, this Doctor week. Gameology? Yeah, and, and we had a lot of fun. And uh, it's definitely weird going from playing Destiny for months now – or two months straight, like that's the only game I wasn't sharing it with anything else. Yeah. To back to like your traditional MMO game, like third just, person over yes. the shoulder, all that. Yeah. Oh yeah, like just, just the combat. It seems so like clunky. Can not clunky. No, the game's super smooth. It just feels slow. Right. Like I right. should. Like I always say, I want to get something in my office for underneath my desk so that I can put my feet up. They make those. They're cheap. Yeah. But if you like, really want to get crazy, you can get a little a little pedal. It's like an exercise bike. So you can pedal your feet as oh, you're Oh, see, I'm playing. I'm country boys. I I my brain instantly went to milk carton. Like one of those, you know, the <laughs> That's a great idea too. 
Yeah, I mean, I have my Poland Farms milk crate. You just flip that upside down. You put your feet on it. I did that on break at a factory all the time. So, I mean, it's perfect. You you say something to prop your feet up. I'm like, ain't you got a log sitting in your yard? You can suck on that (laughs) son of a bitch. Like, I grew up country, boys. You you guys were talking about a little pedal. And I'm like, oh, that's a bicycle. I don't know why you have that in the house. My mama would kick my ass if I brought the bicycle in the house. (laughs) Yeah, my Um, dude. No, I mean, I currently have my feet up on, uh, or for one of them, on my other office chair that I have in here. So, is, um, which is still, I think that I w- tried to make it less suburban. I think I made it more suburban. <laughs> well, anywho, you are suburban. Like, if I you, know. I'm all if, suburban. Yes, you are not a city kid. You are not a country boy. You are 100% suburbia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. Guilty as charged. Thing- what? Oh, dude, this is awesome. Like, I know nobody else can see this, but you're looking <laughs> up, and it, it I swear it looks like a scene from the Brady Bunch, but, like, we couldn't afford a whole lot of people, so it's just, like, two of you. <laughs> so- <laughs> I just heard, uh, I heard something slam upstairs, so. Oh, okay. Try- it looks like you're looking say- up to him, and I see his bare leg on the screen. I'm like, all this is just questionable. I don't know. Like, we really need cameras, because it would change okay, I'm all wearing, of this. I'm wearing gym shorts for the record. With no, dude, state. I don't. Please don't. We don't want to see up them. But the <laughs> here's the thing: we'll do a, an occasional live show. But every time we do a live show, it's a train wreck. Oh, like yeah, but people love those. People yeah, love but, those. No, like the but it the audio ruins is- the audio quality. It like if we just kept it on Twitch and YouTube, it would be fine. But like because it's an audio podcast, it never comes out right. Like the for the audio, audio only, side. folks. Not like the audio quality is fine, but the if you're the just people listening, listening to it, on Apple it Podcasts, makes, it makes right, no right. sense. Yeah, I got you. Um, I don't remember. Oh, so last thing is, is if anybody's around Sunday night, eight thirty p.m., and you want to get down on some Destiny with this guy and right, celebrate two, two years year stream anniversary. Um, let me know. Hell so yeah! Nick, oh. I'll wait for Nick to talk about it. But okay. Nick, because of Nick, <laughs> we did not record um, a special episode last night. Time out. That so is entirely not my fault. So, Nick, what have you been up to? <laughs> All right. Well, let's start with <laughs> that. That lead-in was amazing, by the way. So, last night, Marcus calls me at, I don't know, 4.15. Like, hey, what are you doing? Just finishing up at work. You want to get dinner tonight? All right, sure. He's like, all right, I mean, I got, I'm going to go home and like grocery shop, but after that, I can meet you wherever. He's like, okay, we'll go to my, my neighbor's restaurant. It's great. It's right between us. Perfect. It's an Italian restaurant. Yeah. Okay. He's 12 minutes away from it. I'm 12 minutes away from it. It's perfect. Like pr- pr- awesome. Anyways, meet him there. We see he's like, we walk in. I'm like, wow, this is nicer than I was expecting. It's like a little shop, but then inside is all like recently uh, renovated and things. We go, he's like, go on, sit at the bar. Sure. Okay. Get a couple beers, you know, get some apps. Some some wings, some mots, whatever, eating, chatting, having a great time. Then uh, dinner comes, and, like, the proportions are humongous, of course. It's an and, like, Italian restaurant. Yeah. I'll give you a reference. I my I ordered, like, a, excuse me. I ordered a um, vodka, like, a vodka sauce dish with, like, chicken and hot sausage. And, like, it was so big, I ate it three times. I ate it last night. And then I ate it for lunch today and dinner today. It was really good. Obviously, it's why I ate it twice in a row. But still, it was humongous. And but everybody like, heard it. Nick loves hot sausage. I do. Well, I'm Greek, man. <laughs> I don't think that's what he meant at all. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Just going to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a running joke. It's all good. But the uh, <laughs> my point being, we we're eating like it was like a ridiculously large amount of food. And then like to the point where like I was so sleepy, I got an espresso. And I was still just like a blah, 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 job of the hut. And and we were like chatty Cathy's in the beginning of the night. And yeah. by the time we were done with dinner, we were like falling asleep. And then we went to leave. And it, and my neighbor goes, what the fuck are you doing? I just made you guys fried dough. Go sit down and have another drink. So we go back and he made a fucking giant plate of fried dough for us. Yeah, it and was then, like <sighs> probably what would you call it? Like golf ball size. Like, yeah, dough like puffs of dough yeah. with you know the cinnamon, cinnamon sugar, sugar, sugar yeah. and then like two sides of Nutella, which Marcus tried to convince me is not chocolate. 
because I'm, he knows I'm allergic to chocolate and just likes to see me try to eat it. But anyways, uh, but I did find out that chocolate is the main ingredient in Nutella. I really didn't know. Wait, wait, I wasn't wait, trying. Wait. Time out. <laughs> oh yeah, free ride what? games didn't just got a lot of information at once. <laughs> First of all, wait a minute. You really, really didn't realize that Nutella was all chocolate. No, I thought it was all hazelnut. I'm not kidding. Like, have this, you ever had chocolate before? Lesson. Yes, but like, I thought maybe they, it was like fake, like, f- um, like fake flavoring. I didn't think it was real fucking chocolate. I thought it was legit hazelnut. It's, like, I'm not kidding here. It's liquid chocolate with a hint of hazelnut. I love his deep exhale. It's it's when he knows he's like, <laughs> yeah, we went over this. You don't need to tell everybody. Uh, oh no, like, he's gonna blow up my shit. But like, I there's really certain levels know. of there's certain levels of like stupidity that you have to highlight, right? Like, if I didn't know that, Marcus would do the same thing, and that is exactly but, the back and but forth. Like, you know what I mean? It, it makes a lot of sense because I like I forever like my kids will be like, oh, can we do with a little Nutella snack? And I'm like, Psh, it's seven thirty. Hell yeah, it's only hazelnut, no problem. Twenty minutes later, they're jumping off the couches, going, Bleh! and I'm like, why are you guys so energetic? Chocolate. Exactly. Failure as Choc- a dad. Chocolate. I always um, hated it. But either way, so SpongeBob. as soon as Nick and I sat back down to eat the fried dough, we both looked at each other and were like, We're not yeah. we're not recording today. It was also like 8 30 at, at the fried dough stage. Yes. I think, and I think it was I looked at my watch and it was like 8 27. I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> there goes that. Yeah, there goes our good, uh, It was a good thought. It was a good thought. Right? Oh, it was 100% the, heart, the plan. The heart was there, but the mind had other plans. <laughs> right. But yeah. now at least the the bonus episode that we were going to do that we're not going to tell talk about tonight is still, it's all prepared. So when we finally do it, it's going to be like, we can do it whenever now. Yeah, exactly. It's perfect. Um. So that was last night. Let me Let me go back in the time machine a little bit earlier in the week. So blur, Monday blur, night. Blur, blur, blur. So uh, Lego Star Wars released. I talked about it last episode. I was like, you know what? I should just play that on stream. Yeah. So I so I bought it and I downloaded it and I did and uh, it's pretty awesome. It's I played a Lego Star Wars game. I think it was um, one of the prequel ones, like way 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 back. I don't even remember what console it was for. If it was probably the GameCube, GameCube or PlayStation Two or something in that in that realm. Sure. But, it was like couch co-op. I think it, I didn't even have it. Like some what a friend of mine did, and I would go went over and played it a few times or something like that. But it's very fun. It's awesome that you could just like play through the movies and you can explore all kinds of cool side puzzles and content if you want, but you don't have to. Like the I've got through in the my two hour stream. I got through the whole of episode one, the Phantom Menace. Did you do the bonus stuff or did you just march through the story? No, just march to the story. Like when I was done, I was I only had fifty percent completion. Oh, of that planet or of that or of, of that, that like, chapter. Yeah, which like is honestly more than I was in. I more than I thought I would get. You know what I mean? We're, I we're talking I, a Lego game, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but most of those games, most of those, if I'm recalling correctly, you can't get a hundred until you beat it to where you can use the characters you've unlocked to, to do, go back. Yeah, to do certain abilities in a lot of the rooms and areas. And stuff. Yeah, that's true. I know for a fact uh, I did not unlock C-3PO, and it actually like changed the story a little bit. Where like as I'm leaving, like Anakin, you know, little kid Anakin's leaving Tatooine. Um, he there's a scene where it's like, oh. Sorry, didn't get to finish building. Use three PO. Guess you have to stay here. And then he like you know shuffles off. And it's like, oh well, that didn't happen in the movie. I must have screwed something up. Uh oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Forgot and his then, lithium battery pack somewhere. Apparently, moving. Yeah, on. he wasn't put together. It was like his torso was here, his arms were over there, his head was over there. <laughs> and then like I got a bunch of prompts like use proto use a pro- uh, protocol droid to translate with you to find extra quests. And it's like, oh, I don't have a protocol droid. I definitely missed a quest somewhere. But I yeah. think it's also cool that, like, it gives you the option to not do that. You know what I mean? Well, it's like uh, in all the other games where, like, the side quests are unlocked or things are locked. Like, in Bungie, you need to have uh, Deep Sight 3 in order to find some hidden chests. Right. Just like this, you if you don't get the protocol droid, you're not getting that item that's sitting back there. Exactly. But what's cool about it is... There's so much content in that in the Lego Star Wars game that was just released. I think it's called Skywalker Saga, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. 
like you could just get lost in episode one for hours. Oh, easily. I could have done it. You can probably spend eight or 10 hours just on that planet. So do you plan on just completing the whole episode nine episodes and then going back and working through all the extra stuff? I'll probably, it depends, right? Like I'll probably this next planet episode two, I'll probably do more extra stuff than this time where I just charge through. Like I, I'd like to go, Honestly, I think probably next stream, I'd like to go back and do some of the extra stuff. Like, I obviously want to go get C-3PO and figure that right. out, you know? Because yeah. it's like, unlock, that's missing, like, core mechanics of the game. Or at least of that story progression. It also, too, um, almost like you did with, like, uh, Horizon, Horizon yeah. where you did the main story stuff for stream, but you did all the side stuff. Off stream. Yeah, off that's stream. what I was going to say, too. Is like, I won't play any of the main story stuff on stream, but... If I play Lego Star Wars off stream, I'll, it'll all be bonus side things, you know? Nice. Nice. But, so also while I was streaming, I got raided by the great friend of the podcast and of the nerds community, the Chimeri, which was awesome. Was burr, a, whole, burr, 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 burr. a whole bunch of, of hyped up viewers, which was awesome. Shout out to Chimeri. Kai guy. New, the Kai guy. The Kai guy. Uh, freshy fresh. McFreshington Twitch partner. Um. And also, shout out to Rick Rack, who I did not know before. I believe he's a random Twitch streamer that just likes my chest hair that was out because uh, I was wearing my white, <laughs> my <laughs> my uh, signature Hawaiian shirt that's mostly unbuttoned. You know what it was? I think it was particularly unbuttoned because um, Jacob, aka Gronk eighty seven, aka the formerly former uh, most eligible bachelor in the nurse community. Um, <laughs> He hit redeemed the channel points to unbutton my shirt, so I had no buttons going on. But the um, but yeah, Rick Rack came in with viewers too, which was really cool. They were all super hyped up, commenting on my chest hair and general uh sexiness, I guess, which was very flattering, and I appreciated it. Um, but that was cool to just have like a random streamer, and I will say Rick Rack has probably one of the most ridiculous like channel summary uh intro videos on his channel and i have no words to describe it other than you have to just go watch it and i'll leave and i'll leave it at that but not right now after the episode and after you subscribe and follow uh free ride games <clears throat> but anyways back at the ranch that, Moon was Knight plug. that was a good plug i like that one that was nice <laughs> <laughs> i'm good for one or two of those sometimes was nice. I, use, was I, I use my big brain which is not that big it's a lot of rattling around up here in the big head um, Moon Knight this week, and I'm no spoilers, but Moon Knight episode four came out uh, yesterday, which was epic. I'm wearing my Moon Knight shirt from New Rockstars currently, which I'm pretty pumped about. But um, I'm really enjoying the show. It's turning out to be, it's hard to rank. It. It's it's probably right around as I'm enjoying it about as much as I enjoyed Loki almost. I would say, say what? I don't know what I don't, I don't know. know about like, that. Come on, I don't know about bro. That like, one. come on, come on. Moon, Moon Knight. I have not missed an episode. I am intrigued. The whole split personality, you know, that yeah. is that is beautifully written. And I, I think, think was... so many people. I really feel so many people overlook. I can't remember his name right now. I apologize. Oh, but his acting ability. Oh, to Oscar flip. Isaac? Yeah, from that person to the other person. And it is so fluid, and it is, it is, oh my God, that part alone sells that movie. Another movie that did pretty much the same thing was um, Extraction with uh, Chris Hemsworth. I don't know oh, if anybody's yeah. seen that one. There I was have. a scene in that movie that sold the whole movie for me. The entire movie could have been about a bookshelf after the one, uh, the, the car chase scene. It was early on in the movie, but it was a single shot. And I don't think people understand the. I'm going to look it up right the now. The ability of making that shot happen. It was so impressive. It was so clean. That was single shot chase. It started car chase, ended up in a uh, building, Whoa. apartment complex, and it was one scene. There was no I was cut. Gonna, I was going to say, this is a 16-minute scene. Yeah. <clears throat> did you, did you not, Google no, it? No, no, this, this is a video. Never mind. This scene's not that long. That's a, oh, it's one. Yes, it's one take. One take. Yes. And it is, I, it is the most... One of the most epic scenes I've ever seen in filmography as far as how well it was done, you know, yeah. but same thing goes back to Moon Knight is if you appreciate 
certain aspects of something, it makes the show that much better. Uh, absolutely. I mean, okay, I think I was definitely uh, a little overzealous with saying it's. Oh yeah, way Loki. overzealous. Way over. Loki was <laughs> okay. not here. Uh, Moon Knight's good. Let's. <laughs> All well, right. I think. Okay. I, I think in my head, I'm thinking Falcon and the Winter Soldier was so bad that I'm like that was awful, and then I'm also watching the Halo show, which is horrifically bad at the same time. So I'm like. By comparison, in my head, I'm like, well, it's way better than the worst Marvel show, and it's way better than Halo. So, like, this is pretty good, but no, I think you're right. WandaVision and Loki are the best Marvel well, shows, for sure. I'm not saying that Moon Knight... I've watched two episodes. Um, I'm not saying Moon Knight isn't good. No, but it's great. not like... It's not like a... But, but, like, Loki and WandaVision are, like, A-plus pluses. You know what I mean? Yeah, but here's the thing, is Moon Knight is nobody to us. We're That's four. True, we're you're four episodes into a new Marvel character. Yeah, sure. If you've read the comics, but it's still a new Marvel character. Yeah, where like yeah. Wanda and Vision and Loki, Loki have yeah, been around yeah. in our heads for twelve years. That's true. Since too. The I Avengers... think a lot of people don't realize that how long right. these characters have been part of our lives. That's correct. So you're you. It's hard to say that Moon Knight hits better than any of those because he's brand new right no I agree. and for me i'm just like i say to myself okay i can watch a tv show what am i gonna watch right and mm -hmm. sure i will catch up on all the moon nights uh before we do our review on it but at the same time right now i'm just like meh it hasn't really i think the whole split personality for me doesn't turn me on well, um, you got to keep watching too. No, no, I will, but but I will say at the end of episode two, like it started to make more sense. Okay, right. So yeah. I do want to watch them all because I want to just be up to date. But for me right now, honestly, like it's hard for me to imagine that Moon Knight's gonna—he's not tying into the MCU. This is almost a standalone show. Yeah, and. For me, after 12 years of everything for Marvel being connected, this standalone show, um, that might be my turnoff as well. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I can tell you right now that it's already connected. Right, but Ox Oscar Isaac said he did not want to be involved in a character that's going to be around in all of the MCU movies. I Yeah, no, I, I don't think that's true. Yeah, I think you're right. I I, I will say, I don't think Moon Knight will be in, involved with the larger stuff, but it's definitely has an impact on it. Well, of course, yes. But you see my point. Like, I, I want to, like, if I invest myself into a new character, I want him to be involved, like Loki or Wanda or Vision. Yeah. Right, where it's going to be, like, like, in the All big in. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I will say it gets dramatically more interesting after episode two. Like, I feel like at the end of episode two, you're like, okay, I get what's happening with the character. Yeah. Like, like episode one, you're like, you don't know what the heck is happening to him. And by the end of the episode, you kind of know. And then, like, episode two, you're like, okay, here's the structure of how this magic works. And then episode three, stuff happens. And episode four, stuff happens and makes you question everything that's ever happened in the whole show. So it's pretty epic. And I will yes. leave it at that to avoid spoilers. But uh, also, so Mo Moon Knight came out yesterday. To backtrack a little bit to Tuesday night, Joey Feta, my real-life friend uh, from college in Yukon Paintball, a.k.a. Frozen Cheddar in the chat, came over Tuesday night for some sushi, and uh, he had not seen any of Moon Knight. So I was like, dude, you got to go. get involved. Here yeah, we go, see, marathon that's time. cool night. Right. So he had sushi. He gave me my, my birthday presents that he'd been holding on to since, you know, April 4th because we just haven't seen each other. Um, he got me uh, some lightsaber chopsticks to go with, like they actually light up to go with the sushi. Um, and then so Are they red and green? No, they're red and blue because I would do red and blue. You would do red. I get you're a green guy. But um, Wow. Samuel L. Jackson is pissed at both of you right now. Purple's not even... <laughs> Purple's not even an option. Okay, imagine, I would, imagine the life. What about? Well, I don't know if, about I, this. if I if I was <laughs> picking, I would have picked purple. I think if I had my own lightsaber, it would be purple. Not me, unless I could do a black blade like the dark saber. Oh, imagine a black blade saber. Now, not Mandalorian or uh, was it Mandalorian or was it yeah like Mandalorian inside of Boba Fett's show? <laughs> yes, 
Yeah. Stop you mean the it. Book of, the, pause, uh, the pause was there for a purpose. Mandalorian and uh, Boba Fett. Uh, uh, yeah. The, the, <laughs> the book of Boba DeLorean. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where it was like three episodes of Mandalorian. It's like, which, what, it, which, anyway. Whose show is this again? Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, they had that, uh, that magical saber, which, you know, I'm the sure. Dark saber. Dark saber. Right, right. Right. But I'm talking an actual black saber. Like, yeah. I just feel like that would be, oh, come on. That would be hot. I, I agree. You can get one of those in Star Wars The Old Republic for your character. A black kyber crystal, which is cool. But, um, yeah, I think I would I would probably either do that or if we're doing more, you know, directly from the the movies, I would do purple. But, um, yeah, so we watched Moon Knight. We, oh, he got me. Sorry, I should backtrack. So, lightsaber chopsticks. Uh, lightsaber automatic um, salt and pepper dispensers. So they're they're they take batteries and you you know load the salt and peppercorns in there. You press a button on the top and it goes mm, and like grinds it up for you, which is cool. Um, just like a ho- I'm recently moved in here, so a housewarming gift, if you will, and then a bottle of scotch, which we sampled, of course. So it was awesome. It was an awesome Tuesday evening, and then uh, yeah, then I got dinner with Marcus last night. So I've had an awesome week. I can't complain. Marcus, do we? Always good. Speaking of having an awesome week, I think we got some awesome stuff in our this week at Bungie. Oh yeah, so uh it's called the Twab. Thanks yes. Gator for teaching me that that's what the Twab was. Um so so, this week at Bungie. You, there we go. I was going to say you do know what what it, where it, where it came from, right? <laughs> right, yes. Yeah, so, he but, did not for the longest time. I like, did not because okay. everybody would be talking about and the spirits. That's all it is. Yeah, well, they, everybody was always talking about, oh, did you see the twab? And I'm like, what's a twab? No, I just would say no. And they'd be like, oh, my God, you have to see it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll check it out. And afterwards, I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. And and I was like, oh, this week at Bungie and this date. And I never put two and two together. I will take the idiot card of the day. Anyways, <laughs> so what an idiot. Yeah, so they came out with a pretty big twab this week. Um, Nick's going to read our signature first paragraph just to break down what it has to do with. But if you want more of it, obviously go to Bungie.net and you'll be able to read into it. But there's a couple of the points I want to add to it. Can do. So it it says, this week at Bungie from uh, today. This week at Bungie, we seem to have written a short novel about upcoming weapon sandbox changes. It says, Hello, dear reader. (laughs) I'd like to kick this twab off with a quick word of advice. Never end your drafting phase with your introduction. (laughs) I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, I've been kicking this thing around for about 15 minutes now, trying to figure out the best way to launch you into yet another mega twab worth of sandbox information. We've got quite a few changes planned for next season, and we're excited to start spreading the word. Uh, let's keep our conversation about the live game short and sweet, shall we? It's an interview. It's an interesting week, to say the least. Master difficulty for Valve the Disciple has kicked off with Which just is a few ridiculous. Yes, with just a few short weeks left before Guardians begin to claim their raid titles. Grandmasters continue to push their the limits of player skill, build crafting, and general gameplay strategy. Iron Banner has come and gone, but Trials of Osiris returns this Friday with some light changes to the post-flawless experience. Uh, there's still quite a bit to do, especially if you're trying to finish off each fresh triumph released with the Witch Queen and Season of the Risen. All said, we're having a good time, and we hope you are too. There's some really cool artwork. And then it says, even with a solid launch in our sales, uh, the winds of change will always catch up to destiny. As mentioned, we'll be take we'll be talking about how those winds are shifting the sands of our weapon sandbox. Um, some of you know the Destiny sandbox like the back of your hands. In some cases, well enough to release a forty-five minute video about the intricacies of shotguns. <laughs> that was obviously referencing someone specific. Uh, well, do we have enough some changes ready for you? Uh, I've been known to recommend grabbing a drink of water and a snack for larger twabs, and this is no different. Take this at your own pace, have a good time, and ask questions once you're through. Our community and sandbox teams will be at the ready to issue clarifications as we can, and we'll follow up on future posts, TWABs, or other means of communication if necessary. And it says that's a 
that's a big sandbox dot 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 and there is a whole lot of stuff yeah it's like 30 like our notes went from our typical like two to three pages to 35 pages that's a lot so i'm just going to mention some things free ride if you have anything you see in the twab from this week that you want to talk about please bring it up um one thing that i uh really am excited for um is uh, they're going to reduce the number of one-hit kills in PvP. Mm-hmm. Sandbox overall wants to reduce the number of one-hit kills in PvP, shifting combat more towards primary gunplay. With weapons, uh, this means tuning special weapons, both uh, the effectiveness of their specific weapons and special weapon uptime overall. And one key uh, primary outliner. I'm really enjoying that because... I get one hit killed all the time. Now, I'm not saying that I'm still not going to get killed with one hit, but yeah. I like that. Um, something else that I noticed, and I'm not even going to talk about it. Um, they put Glaive a Rave as the title. I'm sorry. Like, Bungie has the best posts ever. Yeah, they're so casual. Game. Yes. It's like with the our goal part- stated, let's get into the meat of it all. First up, glaives, glaive a rave. Um, they're just talking about a bunch of stuff with the glaive, and then the last thing for me that I saw, um, I'm super happy. My favorite gun in the game is actually getting a buff, and nice. I'm going to be able to use it again because at the end of um, uh, last se- when Beyond Light ended, um. It kind of, uh, the gun was called the Huckleberry. Um, I loved the gun. And for me, that is my favorite gun in the game. And they've, uh, they buffed it. Yeah, they buffed it. So as the Huckleberry had an underwhelming engagement range, updated zoom based on the, uh, on the change to the baseline submachine gun zoom and crazy zoom stat 13 to 15. And also, too, that they are uh, buffing the damage just a little bit, which makes me really, really happy. Yeah, so now um, your favorite gun, be- gun becomes more viable to use again. Yeah, I'm excited to use it. Uh, free ride. Have you? Do you use bows? Oh, yeah. the One of the best weapons in the game. Unlimited ammo. Unlimited range. You got to think that a bow is kind of sniper-esque, in a sense. One, it doesn't use special ammo, which a sniper does, but you've got a bow that has no fall off, unlimited range, and it it smacks like a truck, you know, and there are some bows that roll with some really nutty perks, explosive, rapid hit, archer's tempo, shoot the loot. There are some bows out there that are absolutely nutty, way better than any scout, way better than, I mean, snipers, once again, you take the, in PVE, of course. I'm a PvE guy, so yeah, the yeah. second you hit PvP, I shut my mouth. I don't know what I'm talking about. I keep my butt out of there because it's just not my cup of tea to each their own. Uh, but for PvE, bows are so money. And my favorite exotic in the game is Luminarch. It oh, is right here. busted. Luminarch, right? It, it's always just been a great A weapon, you know. If you've got a void burn, if you've got void shields, anything. In this season, we've got anti-barrier bow. And almost every Grandmaster that I've ran doing helps, I've had Luminarch on because it just does so much damage. And they're buffing it. And PvE, the tick damage is getting 50% buff. And I smiled ear to ear. It just, it's so amazing. You know, if you don't have Luminarch, if you've never tried Luminarch, try it out. You will not regret it. That poison cloud from getting a precision hit, the sound of it alone just gets you happy. I'm telling you. Um, yeah, La- uh, Lamanarch is too oppressive when combined with external damage buffs, but we felt it could be stronger in PvE. With this change combined with the damage buff change above, uh, we've introduced a 60 resilience gate on killing a guardian in PvP with a crit while in an empowering rift or similar reduce poison tick damage versus players change poison damage type from burn to poison this is largely housekeeping not gameplay significance increased poison tick damage versus 
AI by 50%. Wow. That's a big buff for PVE. That's a huge buff. I use it in Grandmasters because anybody that does, you know, in-game content, 90% of your, you know, the things that kill you is the mob of ads. There's 50 trash ads at all times everywhere on the map. You know, they spawn in like that. You get one precision hit. It creates this poison cloud and mm-hmm. poisons everything in a certain vicinity. And with that increase right now, I'm, I'm killing mobs. So with a wow. plus 50%, I'm excited. I'm excited. Anything that makes my job easier of helping guardians achieve victory. I'm 100% behind always have been. Because I really feel like <sighs> I'm careful with my words here. I've always despised the fact that there's always been a flat buff or nerf in Bungie. I've always despised that. If it's too strong in PvP, we've got to nerf it. Well, it gets nerfed in PvE as well, whether they meant to do so or not. You know what I mean? Right, right. So right. they've always had to do that that one sandbox fix. So the fact that they can do things like 50% AI damage, that's huge. That is a step in the right direction. So huge GG's of that. Um, That is cool that it's like, I don't think I've seen that before where they change it. The changes are not universal. Like right. you're saying, like they're, they right. can change it for one mode game mode, but then in the other game mode, it's, it's, it's different or the opposite in this case, which is really cool. Correct. And, yeah. and that's the way it should have, you know, I'm not a programmer. I don't know the intricacies of, of programming a video video game. Excuse me. But it, it's always been a pain, especially as a PvE main. Yeah. And once again, I respect the PvP community. If it wasn't for your Grenader Jakes, your Pure Chills, your, your guys like that, that bring in such a large mass following into this game, it wouldn't be where it's at now. So I respect the PvP community, but it's always been a hindrance that, you know, something that's completely broken or OP in PvP has to hurt the PvE community. So right. the fact that we finally are getting some of that discrepancy where the PvP guys are getting what they want, the PvE guys are not getting hurt because of it, that's huge. That is absolutely amazing. Well, I agree with that 100% because that's something that Star Wars The Old Republic struggled with for years. And they still Mm -hmm. struggle with because they don't have, they don't balance both separately. Yeah, they don't have the infrastructure to do that. Well, or whatever it is. I don't know because like we say, we're not game devs, but they can't Mm -hmm. do that. And seeing that is great. But something that has come up for me in these last few weeks is... I actually have to learn how to play a game and (laughs) not do my motto of pray and spray because I'm starting to use guns that, okay. So they, everybody told me in this legendary lost sector to use the arbalist, which is a, I think it's a linear fusion rifle, but it shoots like a BB gun. But if you shoot anywhere, but the head, it does shit damage. Yeah, and in the head, it's like yeah, but the aim assist on that is godly. The aim yeah, assist on that, I mean, keyboard and mouse. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> not key. with the keyboard and mouse. I'm, I'm keyboard and mouse, man. That thing still magnetizes. Like it's, you'll watch that bullet bend. It is stupid. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, man. I've seen it. I think you're underestimating how um, not good at <laughs> aiming, Marcus is. No, you can you can speak freely by all means. By all means. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I know I know for sure. Like I am terrible at focusing. Like, let me shoot the body. Oh, I'll shoot the head and the body, but like I'll shoot it all. That's why I like the Vex so much because you're shooting them in the belly. That's their crit spot, and it's amazing. You don't have to shoot them in the head. Anyways, really? did really? you play D one? No. Okay. Well, I didn't play D one because it wasn't available on PC. Gotcha. Not I'm a, a PC gamer. No, no, um, no worries at all. Destiny won the Minotaurs, which of course you're familiar with Minotaurs now, which they changed into D2, but the the old dogs of Destiny remember that Minotaurs never had a crit spot. So when you say, you Damn. know, the, the the belly is, you know, the weak spot, it always flashes back to freaking Minotaurs and no crit spot and the pain that was. So Right. That's why I like the Osteostriga so much because it has crazy aim assist. And um, 
Believe it or not, I really like that gun because it has the poison and it helps take down enemies. But when you go into hard content, you can't bring it because. What? Whoa, whoa, stopping you there. Sorry, I know this is your show, but I got to lock it down. Hold on. Osteo Melt. We always have at least one person on my GM runs. If I've got a helper with me, somebody's running Osteo. Osteo, when you get that tick damage to stack, you are melting anything and everything. Yeah, that's saying? what I mean. Oh, I've not, I thought I've you were saying done. you couldn't bring it in the end game. Well, though. what I meant, well, I meant uh, the legendary lost sectors because I feel like there's other guns that are going to be better for me to kill ads and the bosses. Like, what's great about Gallahorn is it does so much damage. Of course. That, and it tracks the boss. So it it melts bosses. So like you have a choice. Do you take the Osteo Striga, which is a submachine gun and take a subpar heavy, or do you take your Gallahorn to be able to melt things faster if you really need to. And, but take the Osteo Striga for the ads, you know what I mean? Right. But that's the fine line that as a destiny player, we have to walk because I've always dreamt of a, of a weekend where the Bungie devs just went full open. We have 12 man raids back. We have exotics in every slot. They just open the game up. You know yeah. what I mean? Just one weekend a month, one weekend every six months where they just let us go full crazy. I would love, love to see that. Like, give us a goal. Give us a, a Bungie foundation where the community has to raise so much money and, and unlock Bust open the floodgates and let us just go crazy for one weekend. 12 man raids and 12 man activities was some of the craziest fun and it really lit the game back up. And there are some, you know, people in their balconies saying, oh, I would never play 12 man, blah, blah, blah. It was fun. It was chaos. It's a video game. Sit right. back, relax, and have fun, you know? That sounds fun. It was crazy. It was just chaos. Have, have all your <laughs> friends killing all, everything? Everything. Everything was murdered. We did 12 man Rat Kings. Oh boy. It was it was stupid. It only stacks up to five or something like that. So we'd have two groups of like six and everybody using racking. It was it was nutty, but it was stupid fun. And it it rejuvenated our love for the game. And going back to your divinity run, um, I'm not sure how many people did it, but I know I was one of few that did. Um, I think we got eight people divinity at once. We took. We took eight people wow. through div through Garden of Salvation and got them all divinity in one run. It was just epic. It was fun, you know, especially because there's so many tethering mechanics and you've got all these extra people in there for tethering stuff. And it was screwing up stuff more than it was ever helping. But it was fun. <laughs> you know, it was chaos. And you got to have that. You got to have that fun and that craziness from time to time or things get stale, you know. That's well, I best. agree. And then my final thought on like the Osteo Striga, because the submachine guns don't have unstoppable or this or that, you can't always take them into a legendary lost sector. Correct. You know what I mean? I mean so we like do, we I, do have overload SMG. So if you're doing right. a, you know, but once again, you're you're negating your, you know, your Yallerhorn, you know, as yeah. it were. But you know, there's still so many other weapons that of course, they're not Yellowhorn, but that, I mean, that's an exotic. You've still got Hezen with auto loading. You've got the Palmera. You've got uh, Threaded Needle. You know, Threaded Needle, even without the fusion melt that we had last season, which rest in peace is on that one. What a great right. season. Oh, my God. It may have been the longest season we've ever had, but damn, did fusions make that season amazing? We did well, more flawless helps than ever before because it just, once again, well, it's it's the fun. I fell in love with the cart. Uh, Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate. I did love you, that gun. Did you have uh, lead from gold on that? Yeah, I have the God roll, whatever it is. Yeah, if you and, had lead from gold, it was it was it was a beautiful thing. Well, and I still <laughs> use it to this day because if I ever need something to melt quick, that's my go-to backup. Like I'll have a primary and I'll switch to that because it melts everything in its sight. Yep. And that's still without the day. fusion melt, you know. Yeah. Um, so Ooh, I love a good tuna melt. <laughs> tuna melt. Wow. It, what's the thing called when you've seen something before? Deja vu. Yes. I just got crazy deja what vu. A great when movie. You said that. 
it Sorry. is. That is um, no, movie. you're good. Um, <laughs> Wait, quick sidebar. Speaking of like memory movies, um, have you ever seen? It's older now, but have you ever seen Memento? No, like actually, King I've King watched King. parts of it. What a great movie! It's a re- that's I think it's Christopher Nolan, if I remember correctly. It's one of his I, I believe movies. it is, but yeah, it, it was so beautifully written. And then yes. the ending when he does what he does, you're just like, oh my god, my god. you know, like it, it just yeah, it changes the entire aspect of the entire movie. It's kind of uh, like watching um, Book of Eli. You yes. watch it once, you get to the end, and you realize, oh my, you have god. to go back. Yes. You have to go back and watch the entire movie again. And then you're like, holy shit, this entire time? You know, exactly. Oh, dude, they're so... They, when movies do that to you, that's the ones that stay forever. You know you know another movie like that? Um, You ever watch the... Actually, this is also Christopher Nolan, but The Prestige? What Was that the, the Magician's one? Yes, it's Christopher... Hugh, ba- uh, Sorry, it's um, Christian Bale and... Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah great great movie great movie. it's another movie where you, well that's not as much it's like once you know the twist at the end well i should say there's like several twists right but like the twist at the end makes you want to go back and rewatch it and like yeah. just spot all the all the you know things that get revealed but um i'm i'm being careful to not spoil like a movie from the early 2000s but still right it's really you gotta be good. careful like it, if you've of, never never mind <laughs> stop stop it stop too soon <laughs> that's 2000 year old spoilers right <laughs> hope you didn't read that book yet <laughs> rip that guy rip that guy um <laughs> i don't know why that struck me as so funny but um what was i saying i don't even know sidebar uh, the about prestige movies, movies the prestige. that uh, catch you at the end yes you go back oh, and watch them. I'm also uh well the batman is really cool but uh, one of the movies it was modeled after seven has a really cool twist too you know, so Brad Pitt. Yep. I didn't realize that, but once I heard that it was modeled after seven, yeah, it made a lot of sense. Yeah, right. It's modeled. It, a lot of the plot is modeled after seven, and then Chinatown, which I believe is from the early seventies, with um, uh, Jack Nicholas is the lead. It's a neo noir film that most of us have probably not seen, but I saw it for a film class, which was really cool. Right. The the cool thing about the Batman is they took some they didn't release really good content there's some unbelievable deleted scenes i know in that movie and like i now i just want a director's cut with it all yeah me too so you're going snyder stats on this one already yeah gotcha yeah gotcha nothing wrong with that i no, mean it's already it's three more, hours but like i don't i want cares? the four hour version oh so dude, if you I'm, have to watch I'm, the I'm the lord of the rings guy here okay oh me too yeah like extend it or get the hell out of my way. You know what? What are you even doing? Yeah, that, those are <laughs> the, ex- the extended editions of the Lord of the Rings movies make me mad because, like, I because it's so much better than the original cut. Like, there's zero right. plot holes when you get the extended versions. Right. Like none. Everything there. is everything is like perfectly <laughs> laid out. There's no jump leaps in logic. Everything makes perfect sense. It's like I feel like. I understand why they had to cut stuff because these movies are still almost three hours without right. the cuts. But like the extended versions, are, if you're going to watch it, do it right. Watch only the ex- the director's cut, extended cut, whatever you call it. I've never I seen ha- them. Any of them? At all? I, I even well, even. Are you kidding? Wait, I've, of course I've watched the movies. No, I'm saying oh, okay. the, I've never seen the extended versions. I have them all. I have them. Uh, I have acquired them via the interwebs when I was at UConn and they couldn't flag you for torrenting things. So I, <laughs> so I have them on my external hard drive. We should definitely just have a day where I slap it on the big screen and you watch it. Have popcorn ready. Like yeah. lots of popcorn. Cause it, it's, it's great. Like or, when you watch the extended, you're like, why the, f- did they, there's other scenes they could have took out. I don't right. give a shit about your mashed potatoes. Give me the good <laughs> scenes. <laughs> exactly. Give me the scene. Give me more scenes with um, Gandalf and Saruman. You know. Yeah. Uh, anywho, I digress. Anyways, <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, back, back at the ranch. ranch, we need a soundboard for that. Yeah, for, for Kitty saying it. But um, we were talking about Destiny and the gun changes, and it's Probably. all good. But if you want to read more, we're not going to go over the whole twop. But um, it is a good. Stay read. tuned. Oh. Shout out to all the peeps who voted. 
uh, Team Mech, baby. So they gave us two options to vote for, Team Monster, Team Mech, Team Mech 1. We're going to, us Titans are going to look like a Gundam character, and it's going to be fantastic. Let's go, Team Mech. And uh, sorry, Monster fans, uh, no fur boots this time. In AIE news. In AIE news, Tuesday nights are clan nights in Destiny 2. <clears throat> And I have a frog in my throat. Come join us ribbit. as we do our <laughs> ribbit. Come join us as we do our re- weeklies and help other players get things that they need in game. It starts 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget, clan night means the fun is mandatory, but attendance is not. Come have some fun. Marcus, do you have more deets? Do you know what you're doing for clan night Tuesday? That's really whatever. I feel like I'm we're um, uh, we're leading the clan, but like if somebody needs help with something, I might not be the correct person to help, but I'm sure going to give it 110% to help you achieve something that you want to achieve. Yeah. But if it's something really difficult, I'm not the guy you want to ask, but I'll sure try and we'll die a lot. <laughs> and you'll die a lot together and it'll be fun. Yes. And so if all this sounds fun to you, go to AIE-Guild.org, uh, get our Discord information the link for which is in the top right hand corner of the website and ask for a guild invite whether or not you play star wars guild republic or destiny 2 or guild wars 2 or pokemon or my little pony online or starcraft or <laughs> Call of Duty. Warcraft, lord of the rings any, online any game we're playing it and we would love to have you nick i don't know how long we've been recording but i'm sure you have to use the bathroom i definitely do so we'll be right back Jeez, Nick, hurry up. We're trying to finish this podcast. And we're back. So go get your backpack, get your map. Don't forget to tell Swiper no swiping because we're going on an adventure with free ride games. Uh, we've got some not so hard hitting questions for Mr. Help Stream himself. And I think Marcus wants to start things off. So why did you start streaming? Oh, man. Uh, I'll try to not go long-winded on this one, but uh, me and my oldest son, one of our favorite pastimes, he'd get out of school, make sure all homework stuff's done. We'd make dinner together. Cooking with my kids, uh, once again, try to keep it short-winded as I can. Uh, yeah, cooking with my kids is no like... No, get into it. There is no <laughs> time limit to this. Cooking with my kids is my my absolute favorite thing to do. Teaching them how to cook, teaching them to be able to take care of themselves and, and the look on their face when they finally make their first steak and it tastes great. You know, it hits that perfect temp or whatever the case may be. You know, we love making meals, chicken stir fry. You know, that's my youngest son's favorite thing to make. Loves the prep, loves the uh, seasoning, the whole nine yards. But anyways, uh, my oldest son, uh, Drake, uh, one of our favorite things to do was we would make our meal. We'd have our meal together as a family and we would watch YouTube. And back then, you know, one of our favorite ones to watch was Jess. You guys familiar with the TH? Of course. No, I'm not. TH3 Jez. So. Come on now. Anyways. Um, he, he used to have these videos, uh, monotone complainy guy. And it's some of the funniest YouTube content out there if you've not went back and watched some of the the classic jazz uh that's that's pretty much what set me on this path was was watching that with my son seeing the smile the laugh uh from him just from watching this and he used to always say dad you're you're great you're always helping people this is back when we did lfg stuff we didn't have the channel we didn't have a community you know it was just me and my good friend uh brian also, uh, Deagle on Deagle on Twitch. Um, we we would just go to LFG. We would look up people on LFG and we'd help them get raid players. This is D1 days, way back mm-hmm. when. And uh, so I've always had a love for for helping people that were struggling. It's always been one of my things. And my son said, "Dad, you should you should stream. There's people out there that need it. You're funny. You should definitely do this." And I'm thinking, "This is my boy. He looks up to me. I can walk on water." Nobody's going to enjoy it, you know, what the hell. But anyway, so after persistence, it finally, you know, he pushed me into it. And I started off uh, minor Destiny stuff, but I played a lot of different games. Monster Hunter was part of it. Um, but yeah, it, it was definitely my son, my oldest boy. And uh, hearing him laugh watching Jez videos, that that definitely pushed me into streaming. 
and uh, doing that to make the world a little bit better. Try to get people to laugh. Doing helps is always second. Making somebody smile is always first. Will always be first on the board. If I can make somebody smile in chat, my job here is done. We can fail a thousand grandmasters, but if I made somebody smile, that's that's a that's a great stream, you know. And that's that's what started all. So. A son's love and his persistency to not shut up about it is uh, <laughs> is what started it all off. Hell yeah, that's what it's all about. I think I, I was introduced with game to video games, you know, because I played them with my dad originally. So I I get the motivation. Like, I guess I should say I can relate to that being a big part of you know, the reason you're you're playing and stuff. You know? Right. Yeah, having that bond. Me and me and my son, we we've gamed so many uh so many countless hours together and you know one v ones and taking on you know co-op campaigns and it's memories oh, yeah. we'll forever share you know some of Absolutely. our greatest times were some of the most painful it was ninja god in black oh my Rex. god that game was so hard yep ninja we god. we would we would just take turns on ninja <laughs> god in black if one of us died hand the controller over the <laughs> other one would play and um, still, I mean, she's ranked, I think she's third on several charts, was the boss inside the church of Ninja Gaiden. And the amount of times we had to hand the controller back and forth, we still talk to, <laughs> talk about to this day. Because she was brutal. Yeah. Great butt. She had an amazing butt. The cutscene was phenomenal. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about if you've played Ninja Gaiden. All right, yep. listen, don't judge me. <laughs> all right, you can at me on Twitter. That's fine. But. Um, you know, it's just, it's stuff like that, you know, that you create these bonds with, you know, and I don't want people to think, oh, well, you know, all you guys did was play video games. No, me and me and my boy, we went fishing, we went camping, we did, you know, all the father son stuff. Um, but for whatever reason, you know, gaming is, is definitely what, what made that bond still to this day, you know, I'll be streaming, he'll stop in or he'll jump into discord or we'll, we'll do something together, you know, and it's, it's amazing that, you know, he recently, you know, had his first kid. I went and met my grandson. Let's go. Month, month and a half old, you know, and to this day, we still game together. And that's something I take a lot of pride in that, you know, even after he's became a man and he's, you know, started his own family, that's so we can, cool. we can still game together and still have those same laughs and those same memories, you know, and it's well, because of gaming. Yeah. Well, gaming has, is one of those things where no matter where you are in the world, you can still play together. Right. The only hindrance you have is time zones. Right. You know, and I feel like we come from a generation of, or I'm 39, right? So my generation was, we're the couch co-op players. Like we're, I'm the land party. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now it's magical how, it connects all of us. Right. And in no matter what, the, all it takes is, you know, send me your Bungie ID or what's your character's name in Star Wars The Old Republic or Call of Duty. And next thing you know, you're playing with somebody that might have moved to Australia. Yep. And you can stay connected and play video games with that person. Oh, yeah. And you you see the memes uh, on, you know, different social media sites. And I'd have to say the one that hits the hardest, and it's still true to this day, is it'll have a, it'll, I think it's usually like six panels. It's always the same premise, though. You know, playing together, you know, and the person gets older and they're still playing together. And then he goes to log in and it has that person's gamer tag and it says last online you know, right. Two years yeah. ago or something like that, you know, and that hits, you know, because you just never know, you never know, but it's always those first three panels. It's the memories you made along the way. And that's what we need to hold on to. And, you know, video games used to have such a bad stigma, you know, Oh, the older generation, of course, oh, all you do is sit in front of your, you know, then you got the same generation that, you know, plays Farmville. But anyways, you know, I digress. Not pointing finger, right. but <laughs> or, or, or oh. just like melts in front of a TV watching games. Yeah, shows. you know, well, like, it's, yes. was, it's, it's non-interactive, but it yes. was always video games were a stigma of a sign right. of laziness. It's like, all right, well, enjoy your murder. She wrote, "I'm, you know, I'm going to go play with my friends." <laughs> they, they literally <laughs> prevent. Wrote. They prevent <laughs> mental deterioration. Video games are like really good for that. Yeah, well, right. So, 
I'm going to say that. Like the best thing an old person can do is play video games. Oh, what was now? I, I hate to bring it up because I almost positive. I read a bad, like a uh, sad article about it. Uh, Grandma Skyrim, you know? What, yeah, I think she passed away, right? Yep. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think so. It wasn't but, doing good. Yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't doing good. I don't know if she's passed away, but you know, it, it's stuff like that. that. Just think about it. I mean, it, it's opened up the world to yes. this whole new light. Have and you ever amazing. heard? Have you ever heard of Grandpa Gaming? Of course. Yes. Oh yeah. He's like he's, he's subbed to my channel. I'm subbed to his. He's a great dude. <laughs> yes. All right. I love yeah. his new emotes. If you, for anybody that listens to this, you got to stop by Grandpa Gaming and check out his dancing emotes. They are top. They are just absolute top. And his energy. <laughs> <laughs> and oh man, yeah, I love him, dude. He's he's always had my respect because he's he's another one of those guys that just remains calm, does helps as well, and he's just he's just he's just a great guy, great guy. That's awesome. Um, so what made your? I should say, why is Destiny Two your mainstream game? How'd you get into Destiny? Uh, Destiny has actually just been my main game forever. I've uh, well, since Destiny 1, you know, I played the, the beta when it came out mm -hmm. and I fell in love with the open worldness. I fell in love with the, uh, the grind aspect, um, you know, just a different loot and always trying to get the better role, the better version of this weapon, which of course we didn't always have, you know, Destiny 1, we had flat rolls. This is what you got. Right. Enjoy. Um, but it was just the uh, the adventures and becoming stronger and using different builds for different uh, different things. I, I really feel like Destiny set the stage. You know, as much as the non Destiny players want to admit it or not, Destiny set the bar on gaming in in certain aspects, especially when it comes to first person shooters. Mm -hmm. How many times has a phrase came around? And this is one thing that I always love, especially the non Destiny players. Uh, you know, this game is coming out and it's going to be the destiny killer. You know what I mean? I've heard that a lot. It's yeah. not the, it's not the Minecraft killer. It's not the star Wars new Republic killer. It's not, oh, you know, old Republic, the older, sorry, my apologies. Sir. It's, it's not call of duty killer. It has always yeah. been Fortnite, whatever. Yeah. It's always been the destiny killer. And yet after every time it's been murdered, this bitch has still got Warlock self rest from Destiny 1 and just pops <laughs> right back up, you know? And that's that's one thing I've always admired about Destiny is, is the longevity and how they can keep refreshing it. We have bad seasons, but when you look at Destiny as a whole, the years that this game has been alive and the lives that it has changed from the foundations to the charity work that it does to, to its acceptance of people from all walks of life, I admire that about this company more than anything, for sure. Yeah. But uh, other games, I mean, I've I, I <laughs> I've put some hours in a Monster Hunter. <laughs> we'll just we'll just throw that one out there. Monster Hunter That's, World was that was my shit. You know, I was just I gonna. One. I was sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was I was gonna ask, uh, what was what's your favorite game of all time? Favorite game of all time, Goldeneye yeah. sixty four. Wow. Whoa! Let's go. No, you've you've got to pay homage to the best first person shooter, uh, the original first person shooter. If I yeah, um, well, I should. Uh, no, it wasn't. That. It wasn't original because you had um, Wolfenstein. You had Doom. Well, Wolf, yeah, Wolfenstein and Doom. That's true. Um, oh, but, but no, like, the, the main reason I've got to go with sixty four, and I was actually talking to my fifteen year old son about it because uh, I showed him the TikTok, and I, I yeah. hope. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. There's a TikTok of um, video game music that goes harder than it should. And it's okay. the composer doing the pause music for Nintendo 64 GoldenEye. And the video <laughs> is just absolutely amazing. It's so good. But anyways, so I showed him that and he goes, I, I don't think I've ever played that, Dad. And I, was, and I started going on about the details. It was the first game, which is baffling to say this. It was the first game to have hit registration depending on where you hit the enemy. Oh, yes. We don't wow. have that 99% of the games, and it's 2022. But right. GoldenEye, like, if you shot somebody in the foot, they hopped around on one leg. You shot them in the <laughs> arm. They would, oh, man, my arm hurts a lot because you just yeah. shot me there. We don't have right. that now. How? You know? 
it's right. it's it's crazy but i don't know it was it was just so beautiful and it was so amazing especially for its time and it was one of the first few games that gave us the time challenges that it did you know it was almost dare i say one of the first footsteps in speed running games does anybody remember some of the crazy speed runs that came out for Golden Eye sixty four? I don't. You I don't have really, got but... to look up. You've got to look up speed running street Golden Eye. If you type that in Google, you're going to okay. see some nutty shit where these guys are facing at the ground, speed running backwards and shooting a grenade launcher to like avoid certain aspects. It's crazy. That is crazy. It, it's it's wild, but that is you know, crazy. Golden Eye will always be up there. Uh, as as far as my all time favorite, just for what it did to the gaming industry. You know how you know a game video is old when you pull up the YouTube video and it's in three four aspect ratio. Well, what else you wanted to be in? I mean, no, I game know game. it's just funny. Like I forgot that that was a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> look up Atari ET, <laughs> best oh, game of all time. <laughs> no, don't, please don't. You deserve better in life. It's awful. It's. I think there's like 2.5 million copies still buried somewhere. Oh, I'm sure. This it was is such a flop. Who is this? Is that? a super important question to our channel. Who yes. is your favorite Star Wars character? I haven't really put any thought into that one. Am I? Wait have a minute. I you can't ask that now. Have I? Have I, have I watched Star Wars? Yes. Did I like the original trilogy more than Episodes One through Three? By a fucking landslide. But episodes one, two, and three still had their great, you know, great parts in those. So I, you know, I respect them for what they were. Um, but no, I think you know the original trilogy definitely set the stage as far as um, what what they did with with movies of sci fi nature. Before those, sci fi movies were not really sought after because they just didn't do that well. You know, Star Star Wars really changed the game as far as sci-fi and what people accepted. Sorry, you asked me who my favorite character was, and I went on a tirade of. <laughs> I actually Res loved every minute of it. I was gonna say we're all about the sidebars. You know? the the sidebar, never. respect. Like yeah, respecting what Star Wars did for filmography is is a step above. People have no idea what they did for it, but. Uh, Favorite character? I don't know. I'd probably have to go with uh, badass mini Yo or badass Yoda from episode like uh, two. Was it? Okay. Yep. Uh, Clone Wars, I believe. Yes. Awesome. Clone during during the clone co uh, clone battle when he just goes absolutely ham and then he just picks up his little walker and little putts off after doing five thousand somersaults off a wall and shit. I, I thought that was just like <laughs> epic. I was like, yeah, all right, man, <laughs> quit playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, that's a good answer. Marcus, do you want to talk about ours real quick or no? I don't need to. You can. Well, I was going to say my, f I, I see for these questions. I like to like, at least chime in with ours a little bit, you know, go for it. For yeah, mother. I'm all for it. Like, I never know what to say for my favorite game of all time. Okay. I feel like it changes every time. Marcus, I know he's going to say Castlevania of the night and or Mass Effect two, but, uh, hold sorry, on, hold Castlevania, on, hold on. Symphony hold of the night. I, I've got, I've got to ask, are we, like, I'm not for sure of, like, full name Castlevanias. Are we talking, like, NES Castlevania? No, this was a PlayStation 1 uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I, I actually didn't own a PlayStation until a year ago. So okay. I, I missed yeah, out so, on, I so missed out on was, many games. Right. So it was still a 2D side-scroller, but it was updated graphics. And the game had the biggest plot twist ever. So you went through the whole game. And you got to Dracula and you think you kill him and uh -oh. the castle turns upside down and now you have to go through the entire castle all over again and the enemies hit 10 times harder than ever before. And it was just like blow, blow you away. Right. You were not ready for that. No, like, that's not happen. something you expected to happen. I got you. That's correct. Yep. I got you. Uh, I, I got to pay respect to the original Castlevanias. I mean, hidden rooms and, you know, using holy water on certain spots was such a, such an awesome aspect, especially for an NES game. Like, have you done, have you done your research as far as, uh, or ever looked into, not done your research, I apologize, but uh, looked into the entire file size of the original Mario Brothers game for NES? Oh, no. I'm vaguely familiar with it. It's like, 
a very very small amount it's like 256 kilobytes yeah was the <laughs> entire is... game yeah it is something megabyte. uncanny my phone my phone <laughs> takes 27 megabyte photos and this right. <laughs> entire game that shaped and molded my childhood was 256 kilobytes or something crazy yeah i was gonna wild. say yeah this this podcast is gonna be like 500 megabytes Right. Uh, it's going to be well more than that. Well more than 500 megabytes. I don't yeah, sure. I think it's, it's more. It's a couple of gigs, I think. Yeah, so. it'll be a couple no, of gigs. Not per, no, no, actually, it is. Like one podcast episode, because there's no video involved, um, is usually about 500 megs. Oh, yeah, yeah. You it's forget about bad. the no video the aspect. As a, as yeah. a streamer, With kinda... the video, it would, it would be a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, it would be gigs. Yeah. yeah. And Nick, um, I like to spice things up, bro, with our questions so they're not just stagnant. So don't don't fret. And so for my favorite Star Wars character um, is R2-D2. Uh, he doesn't need the force. He doesn't need to talk. He doesn't need to know anything. Just every single person knows he's always going to be there to have your back. And in every important part of every single movie, R2-D2 is there to help without question, without hesitation. And that's why he's my favorite. I'm actually going to change my answer. Oh, I will shit. give a... Wait, whoa, actually... whoa, whoa. Whoa! Answer changes mid cast. Oh, this can't be allowed. <laughs> Check the guidelines. I think Nick. I think Nick, after doing this podcast for 149 episodes, has yeah. thought about his favorite character, and he's molding himself into the true character loving person of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Oh, that's interesting. Was that so? The, it's the trap guy. The trap guy. No, no that's that's no. Admiral Akbar. Oh, so I thought you said no. Admiral Frog guy. I'm so sorry, I didn't even hear you. <laughs> no, no, no. Grand Admiral Thrawn is his name. So, oh, sorry. Uh, well, I should. His, his real name is Mithron Yerodo. But uh, so my classic answer to this question, I'll just explain them both quickly. Uh, is actually Darth Bane. So where both these characters are more prevalent in legends or like extra content and books and stuff. So Darth Bane is the original Sith that initiated the rule of two so way 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 back in, be in between the old republic and the um movies and stuff there is a time in which there's lots and lots and lots of sith um and they're all they're they're he get i should say there's lots of sith similar to their how there's lots of jedi but with the sith the hierarchy constantly gets screwed up because they're always stabbing each other in the back darth bane this character um realizes this and says screw it i'm gonna be the one i'm the most powerful sith right now anyways i'm killing everybody and then i'll be the only sith and there'll be no backstabbing and then i'll take an apprentice um i'll train them up eventually and eventually they'll kill me so the cool part about darth bane that i like is there's a trilogy of books about him um and then at the end of the book his in the third book he's learning um this ability called like essence transfer where you can transfer your essentially force ghost or essence into someone else right as you're dying so they leave it vague at the end of the book as to whether or not he trans essence transfers himself into his apprentice well fast forward uh to rise of skywalker and palpatine's like i am all of the sith and you see all the sith behind him and all that fun stuff so in theory it could it it would make sense that um darth bane has been all of the sith and is palpatine and is just is the bad guy of the, all of the star wars for all time which would be pretty interesting but it's regardless it's cool that he's this guy that initiated the rule of two and is just a badass character but i would say my answer as i'm thinking about I'm like what character have i really related to that was really cool and i enjoyed a lot also and i was thinking about thrawn because i really like the thrawn books also so he's a big character in the first piece of content after the original trilogy in um book form book form yeah heir to the empire which was really cool he's the big he's the bad guy he's the guy who takes over he's a different he's an alien species of chiss he's blue skin with red eyes um and very very smart and like a crazy um tactician he and he takes over the empire after palpatine dies in in those legends books but then he you know he's also a, a character in canon now um, in Star Wars Rebels, but also is going to make an appearance in um, the Ahsoka series. She's well, we don't know that confirmed. Well, it's she. She mentions that she's looking for him in the Mandalorian season two, right? So, like, you can one can assume that in her own series, you're going to see he's going to come up. 
but I'm pretty sure no, he, he is confirmed in there. He's cast. Mads, uh, I forgot who it's gonna who's gonna play him, but he's there's a Thrawn live action Thrawn cast for sure. But anywho, interesting. I, I, that's my favorite too, off the top of my head. But I like dark side characters. If you couldn't tell. Um, let's see. So I think I know the answer to this, but would you consider yourself more of a PC or a console gamer? Started out on an Atari. Um, <laughs> wow. So not to, not to flex my gray hairs too hard, but, uh, been, been gaming for a while. Um, even growing up, uh, not to go into too much detail, you know, I grew up, uh, grew up not well off. And uh, so on the weekends, I would go to my grandfather's house and occasionally he would actually rent a PlayStation. Uh, I think it was like movies and more blockbuster, something like that. You could actually rent a PlayStation, you know, thing. And I'd always rent the same game, Resident Evil. Now, here's oh, the yeah. fun stuff. You guys ready for this? For anybody uh-huh. that's familiar with Resident Evil, I know you said something about PlayStation earlier, so you probably know where I'm going. When you rent a PlayStation, guess what it doesn't come with? A memory, a memory card. card. Yeah. Playing Whoa. the entire Resident Evil game without a without... memory card, which <laughs> means when you died, what happened? <laughs> you started oh, you you start start over. over. <laughs> wow. So, you know, um, but no, definitely uh, I, I, I'm on mouse and keyboard. I prefer mouse and keyboard, but, you know, you got to show love to your roots, so. Um, as far as my preference, always M and K, uh, I love the fluidity of, you know, mouse, but, uh, you know, as long as somebody's playing and they're having fun, I don't care if you're on a Game Boy DS, you know, it's, <laughs> it's all about, you know, finding that escape from reality, you know, finding that happiness, play on whatever makes you happy. My cousin hacked a T, T something calculator. In uh, oh, high school, yeah, eighty four or something. I believe one ones. it was one of those Texas Texas instrument ones. Yeah, yeah. And he put Mario on that fucking calculator. It's got to be a TI eighty four, but yes. All right, so or you're familiar. Some variant of it. You're familiar with it, yeah. He actually yes. put Mario on a calculator. So I That's always say this. Cool. I always say the same thing. If you can play on it and it makes you happy, that's all that matters. So. That's the, awesome. The whole battle of uh, PC versus console, it's its always been silly because, you know, if it makes you happy, what the hell does it matter? What's the battle here? Yeah, I agree. I think I think it's more the two, the, the war was, or war, but like the debate is more like between which console, you know what I mean? Right. Well, but. for sure. You know, you've always had Xbox versus PlayStation and, you know, Nintendo or Nintendo versus Sega and, you know, Sega. it just, it's a generational ah. thing, but. Um, Agreed. What is your favorite book? Oh, uh, actually, and I may catch flack for this. Some may not even consider it a book, but, you know, I've got two cheeks and they can kiss them both. Uh, It was the, (laughs) uh, it was, uh, oh man, I can't remember. It was the, uh, it was the Wolverine Weapon X. The Weapon X novel. Ooh, yes. Ooh. It, it was it was so well the graphic, the um, the artwork, everything about that really, really drove me <laughs> into comic books at an early age. Because it was one of the first, you know, graphic novels that I picked up. And it was just phenomenal. Phenomenal. I think it really set the bar as far as uh, you know, comic books and things of that nature. But as far as book goes, I mean, if anybody's ever read the Weapon X you know, book, it is, it's, it's not a comic book, you know, it's, no, it's pretty graphic and it's, it's phenomenal. It was very well written, but of course, I mean, now Marvel's changed the story, changed his name and what the fuck are they doing to my boy? You know, this is my I guy. <laughs> it's terrible. Right. I hope, I, I hope they do reincorporate the mutants into the, into the uh, current MCU. And I honestly think that they're going to do it with this multiverse of madness movie. It it opens up the doors to so much, but at the same time, it's. I know we're not going to do time travel anymore, but it's a scary thought when they add that into a movie because it's always, it's always an option now. Once you add that into, you can't take it out. Yeah, yeah you can't, and that's. It, there's certain things that they should never add into, 
uh, universe in that aspect. And the multiverse is another one of those where it's like, well, we can just take it in, we can take it out, and we can, you know, change it however we want because it's it's there when we want it, and just, it's not blame, when we don't. Yeah, just blame it on the multiverse. I will say they they're. I think they're kind of getting rid of that. Hey, once you have time travel, this is always going to be a thing. Aspect with oh, this I know they will this movie. Yeah, be- no, because they're saying like like even in the trailers, they're like, hey, you can't change time. You can't mess with time. You're gonna fuck up the whole everything. And then in this multiverse of madness movie, you're seeing time manipulation screwing up everything. Right. So right. I think after they resolve the conflict of that movie, they'll be like, all right, no more fucking time travel ever. You know what I mean? Well, right. I mean, I'm I'm not going to go into spoiler territory, but I mean, as you could tell, my favorite book's Weapon X for fuck's sake. So, I mean, obviously I've read yeah. some, you know, but you've got the time council. Right. And I think we've seen that in a trailer and I think that's going to yeah, play the, a l- large part into, you know, the shutting down time travel. This is it, which I thought was really cool how they incorporated that with the Loki Especially right. when they go back. Sorry, if spoilers, but I, I think we're spoilers past the Loki. deadline. I think we're past oh, yeah, the deadline of spoilers. But how it changed everything, you know, in Loki's world from what they did, you know, and right. all the statues and everything changed. I, I really, really thought that was pretty cool. So agreed. I Time travel has always been madness. awesome to watch when it's a one off, like right. one of the best, best series that that x-men ever came out with was age of apocalypse oh that's cool oh my god and that was all based around time travel you know yep charles's son went back in time went to kill magneto accidentally killed his own father and created age of apocalypse and it was one of the best one-off series but once again it was a one-off we had our great stories it it got resolved and everything went back to normal so it was cool because it was a one-off. You know, it's it's when it lingers into a story too much where they always right. have that easy out. I think one of my a really cool comic, or and actually they made it into an animated movie later, but the Flashpoint series for the Flash or Flashpoint storyline. Right, I never saw it. Really, you should watch the, at least the animated movie because it's the big plot point for. Um, the CW show, and also it, I think it'll be what they're basing the new Flash movie around. Also, what are they going to do with the Flash? And like, I I don't know what where where they actually stand with the whole league right now because I know the movies yeah. have not done exactly great. But well, I feel like they're in a lot. Like I feel like they're they're rebalancing maybe right yeah. now because Aquaman was a success. Um, Wonder Woman is a success. Wonder Woman was a success. The new Batman Batman is a success. Yeah, like Dark Knight and uh, the one with Bane. I forget the name of it. Even Uh, Rise Again or Dark Knight. Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, and then the other one too. Even uh, Batman Begins was good, but I feel like the DC is almost like recharging and finding their path. And I hope they do because. They well, yeah, have Batman so- versus Superman was terrible, and the first cut of well, yeah. Justice League was terrible too. Yeah, but. but I think we, that was just, just real quick. Show some absolute mad respect to Tom Hardy. I mean, you you brought up Bane, but my God, is that man like just the absolute best? Venom. Yeah. I know a lot of people didn't care for Venom because it you was, know for whatever it's not reason. Tom Hardy's fault though. No, but damn, can he fucking act like this man? I, you know, once again, I am going way off course here from DC to just Tom Hardy, but you know, he played Bane. He's, he's played Venom. He's done some absolutely stellar roles and just watching that transformation. Always admired. One of my favorite, one of my favorite for sure. He's great in Peaky Blinders also. And what? In Peaky timeout. Have you seen Peaky Blinders? Oh yeah. Okay, if you, good. if any, any time I, 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 my son actually got me into the show and anytime somebody asks me to recommend him a show, I say start season one, episode two, Peaky Blinders. Episode is, one almost almost like put me off the show because it was just so like mundane for, you know, it just didn't grab it. Episode two and on. Oh, what? It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's such a great program. Such a great, Agreed. you know, it's 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 kind of like the Sherlock. It's it's one of those yes. that everybody should watch. And yeah. yet so many people haven't. I don't I don't I don't get how people have overlooked Benedict 
Cumberbatch. In, in insert name of something that you know <laughs> sounds yeah. familiar to it, and you yeah. know who I'm talking about. And yeah. you know, it's absolutely, it's absolutely phenomenal. Get one more sidebar on a sidebar. Okay, it's sidebar of a sidebar of a sidebar. It's sidebar context. Se- <laughs> it's sidebar section. But uh, speaking of shows that people can skip by, like. I, have it, either of you seen The Bodyguard, or maybe just called Bodyguard on Netflix? I really no, thought you were going with when the... you say The Bodyguard, I yeah, think that's, of that's Houston. Yeah, that's Houston. I know. Yeah, yeah but I think it's just called Bodyguard. <laughs> but it's it's starring the guy who plays Rob Stark, and also who's the lead in Eternals. And no. well, There's anyway, a lead it, in Eternals? Well, Icarus in Eternals. Oh, so I watched that movie. I tried watching that movie. Eternals I was just going to say, I watched about 45 minutes and I was just like, I fell that. asleep so many times and I was awake when I started it. I, I was not yeah. tired. It's like the NASCAR of Marvel movies. <laughs> like it is going to put it. It is going around in circles for hours and nothing exciting is happening. Now, occasionally there's a wreck <laughs> and you're like, Oh, and Oh then, shit. And then, you know, it's right back to doing circles again. I'm like, well, <laughs> That was that was something that happened, but yeah, I that, have no idea. It was so bad. That is a fantastic way to explain the Eternals ex- watching experience because that's exactly how I felt. I'm they like, need to just put that on the label, you know, the NASCAR Marvel. Here we go. There are some cool plot points and like what act like the storyboards would have been good to wa- to read. <laughs> I think looking you know at I mean? the storyboard would have been more entertaining. Just I all these agree. post-its plastered everywhere. Like, no, we're gonna make this work. Like that dude in the meme. Like Sager yes. hanging out his mouth, just uh. <laughs> Charlie This'll Day work. from Always Sunny. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. You oh know, my it. God. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, oh anyways, that show Bodyguard is good. Now to bring it all the way back, uh, out of all the all four stages of the dream, says sidebarception. Um, still talking about the what? Flash. <laughs> oh yeah, well there I didn't finish go. that thought, but the so the Flash. <laughs> <laughs> the the flash is i'll just give you the uh, the quick version of the flashpoint because i know you're not going to go read it marcus are you familiar with it I, I like how you said the quick version of the flash like i don't know if that was on purpose but i'm here for no. it you know what i mean Pun not intended oh damn but, it so basically the flashpoint plot is um barry allen goes is the flash he's established as the flash he goes his his dad is in prison for the murder of his mom and he's wrongly accused so someone killed his mom they don't know who when he was a little kid barry was a little kid he goes back in time to try and stop the murder of his mom he goes back in time again by how running so fast fast (laughs) yeah it's running so fast in place that he like i mean i saw one version where it's like he used a cosmic treadmill to get up to speed and then another version where like he i don't know that was superman that ran like flew the opposite direction of the earth or something yeah he flew the opposite earth to save uh lois but yes i I guess i think they didn't watch science but anyways yeah barry just like runs so fast he goes back in time but he goes back in time and realizes that somebody deliberately killed his mom and it was this character called the reverse flash very uh creative naming there from dc but (laughs) instead of instead of a red suit with yellow accents he's got a yellow suit with red accents but he he's the dude who kills uh barry's mom and then the reverse flash stops adult barry from doing it also and then barry goes back to the future and things are all screwed up and now the reverse flash is um running amok and he has to solve that problem too but um it's a really cool story and in this movie the the whole flashpoint thing is going to happen because Barry obviously in in the just the Snyder cut of Justice League goes back in time and it's set up fairly similarly so i'm this 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 next movie with for the flash in some of the trailers you can see that there's two different versions of Barry in it so like there's some sort of present Barry and then a past Barry or something like that where he's got like different hair lengths and stuff so. i'm just uh I'm just sick of it. Like I'm sick of like the time travel. Like, like I feel like now I just feel like, okay, now DC has to copy Marvel because now we need the bizarros and all that shit. And like, I, yeah, but you can't really say it's copying this one because of movie when both have had it like buried. Oh no, of course. I just feel like, right. uh, Marvel. I mean, DC is just playing catch up to Marvel. Like, okay, we saw what Marvel did. Let's copy that and let's 
we can create some good movies and make everything connected. But I feel like it's not happening organically. They're forcing it down your throat. Right. Yeah. Or maybe I'm just burnt out on that storline you know what i mean yeah I, I think i think you're just burnt out i mean there I is a, a little bit of, of it are. i mean there's yeah which how you know and i'm i'm definitely still on board i am going to go watch thor love and thunder i am going oh, to too. watch guardians of the galaxy i am going to watch multiple first of madness you know i know but you know the fact that people aren't burnt out on that superhero genre is just mind-blowing in itself the fact that they can keep creating you know, uh, these movies that keep people in, interested in showing up. So, I mean, yeah, that in itself you know, is amazing. But I'm, I'm wearing a Moon Knight shirt right now, you know? Right. So, here's something else. <coughs> I, I didn't see anything in Thor Love and Thunder. I'm not saying I'm not going to see it. But I didn't see anything in that trailer that makes me scream, I want to go. I'm glad they did that way. I am yeah, me too. I am I'd so over movie trailers hitting Showing every everything. major plot point to where I get in there and I can pretty much okay, well I've seen this in the trailer which means I know this is going to happen, you know, right. and it's it takes away from that magic, you know? I I just I I've never been a fan of the overtelling. I understand it's marketing. They want to get people hyped for it. But I feel like this trailer unlike most was just enough, you know, because they showed the scene of, you know, a lot of people think it's some huge ice monster, but if you read the comics, it's actually one of Thor's close friends. Uh, right, that's a god, know, right? Yeah, he's a god, you know, and then you've got this sneaky little preview of Thor or um, Zeus, you know, there's yep. just enough there to be like, what the hell? I've got to find out what's going on. You know, you got Greek gods, you've got, um, Jane, whose last name I'm forgetting now, as the Mighty Thor. Here, here's kind of here's the best part. Here's the best part. If if we're introducing Zeus, that means we get Hercules, and we've right. already got we've already got somebody that played Hercules once before, baby. We're getting Dwayne Johnson calling it here <laughs> on the podcast. We're getting Dwayne Johnson in Marvel. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. We've already got him going to DC for uh, uh, Black Adam. Black right? Adam. Yeah. yeah wow. Boy. Yeah, that would be cool, Marcus. You're you're channeling your inner Storm and Norman right now. We've you're got we've got grandpa. we've got so many actors that are double dipping their toes, and I just you know, yeah, I from just, DC to Marvel, and they're doing a great job. I mean, hell, you've got um, oh, who the hell is it? Damn it, Thanos. Uh, Thanos, and he played Cable. Oh, you know, Josh same, Brolin. Yeah, same universe. <laughs> mm -hmm. My man didn't even leave. <laughs> right. He just looks the same, but um, <laughs> yeah, Marcus, you're just being a grumpy grandpa. There's some no, 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 no. I just, I, I guess for me, I, I think I'm just burnt out on the superhero movies. Like I'm gonna watch the movies because I like, I'm excited for the multiverse of madness. Yeah, you have to Doctor be. Oh, Doctor Strange is so just. I mean, I will say sorry. I, I, I hate to interrupt. I am so sorry on that. But what they did to our girl Wanda is. Fucking, pardon my language, blasphemy. Oh, what do you mean? Oh my god! In the movies, she is like throwing pebbles. She oh, can yes, alter yes, yes. the well, entire world. But not, she, oh, she was town. young Wanda then. She didn't realize it then. That's the way I, I'm looking at the movies. I get that. Yeah. And then at the end of WandaVision, where her astral form, you know, once again, hashtag no spoilers. But anyways, you know, you can yeah. definitely tell. She is opening that up, but it was just, I don't know. We'll, we'll see where they, where they take my girl, but no, my respect for, for Scarlet Witch has always been just absolutely uncanny with her abilities. They made an amazing character. The fact right. that they made her like, uh, what was it? Non-mutant in, in what was it? Wasn't oh, she? She's a, she, she's, um, I think she's kind of mutiny. Like she had, She's got experimented on and then got exposed to the power of, like the Mind Stone, and that like awoke her powers. Still want to see I, how they're going to tie in their dad. You know, let's let's right. see how they get that one going. <laughs> but right. what I'm saying is, I think I've just seen so much that 
nothing has brought me in to go, oh, I want to. And what I was going to say about Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange is not one of my favorite characters. Characters. And uh, he, I just he's my number one favorite. Character. Well, no, I know that, but that's what I mean. And that's what's awesome about it. But like all I hear when I hear multiverse of madness is there's going to be zero canon from this point forward because they're going to just be able to go like, cause even going through Loki, they're just going to be branching timelines everywhere. So now they're going to be able to make 50 different captain America vid- movies. And they're all going to be set in different timelines. Like I foresee a Captain Carter from the um, the animated from, one. Uh, yeah, what, what if. if the what if I foresee that movie's coming? I know it is. She's going to be in Multiverse of Madness, right? But then she's going to get her own side branch movie. I don't. I don't think so. I, they did see, a I, lot with her in What If. I yeah. I I'm, I might eat my words on that one, but I I don't think that they're going to push it to the to that level. If they were to yeah. do anything, they would pull characters from the different multiverse and bring them into the main MCU storyline. I don't. Or they because, do a yeah. runoff seasonal show, well, right? Run, One season yeah. of it because I feel like, well, I feel like the shows are better than the movies, anyways. Really? Well, yeah, yeah. 100%. I mean, I like that. I think that format is better. Oh, for storytelling. I thought you were just meaning like in general to. No, well, see, like Marvel's different because the shows are very good. Obviously, WandaVision and Loki are, are fantastic, but like, what were your thoughts on Hawkeye? It was um, fantastic. Loved it. Was, it. it was very solid. Yeah. It's it's tough to I feel like it's tough to compare because it's like street level, like stakes versus like you know universal level stakes. Oh, I got you completely. Like, yeah. Loki, dude, but, the Kingpin. Oh, wow. Whew. I love. Oh, I love seeing Kingpin in that man. Did not see that coming. Did not no. see that coming. That was that was probably one I of the coolest. I see what you did there. Yeah, that I was awesome. See, I don't see that coming. There you go. Because the ending. Oh yeah, I'm here for it. You like okay. that? Yes, I did. You're welcome. <laughs> I appreciated the pun. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, prefer the shows, but the movies are different because they've uh, they're like grand scale. Grand scale, yeah. Yeah. Um, anywho. Do we want to circle back? Yes. Let's, to bring it way all the way back. Want to start with a, a easy question? Are you Let's asking me if question. I want an easy question? I think so. Oh, well, true. it's I not mean... easy, but it tells a lot about tells us a lot about your character and like your personality and like if you're a, a real human or secretly a reptile living among us. So, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Cookie dough. Thank God we got a regular human for a guest this week. Oh, you got to go with cookie dough. Oh, man. Like, Dairy Queen has what's called a cookie jar. It's cookie dough with Oreo. Whoa. I, I don't know if that's everywhere, but, dude, it's, it goes harder than it should. You know what I mean? <laughs> it goes harder I, than it should. Yes. Y- um, you're mixing those two together, man. That's that's life-changing, you know? We've we've had a couple of guests say pistachio, and it's just terrible. Isn't that a peanut? Yes. Yeah. Like exactly. Thank you. What What do you mean? So the Ooh. like the expensive peanuts is an ice cream. Yeah, I grew Either. up poor, so I mean, there's a lot of things I'm still learning to this day. So <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I, so it's like a uh, teal green colored ice yeah. cream. It's terrible. It's and just like, terrible. It's, I mean, I went it's to yeah. this, I went to a fancy fancy hotel, you know, um, down in Florida. And they had the weirdest water fountain in the bathroom. But um, I think that's just a sink. That's that called a, it was a bidet joke. But anyways. Oh, let's go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, I needed more context. But, uh, uh, weird water fountain. Uh, in, the, yeah. um, <laughs> in the toilet. Yes. Wow. I'm going to clarify it. I would have got it. Um, I know we touched on it a little bit, but I really want to know. What made you ever want to become a help streamer? Because there was a time when I knew what it was like to not have that. To okay. be a solo player, I see all these YouTube videos of people acquiring this amazing loot, these amazing exotics, getting this, you know, the the look on their face for getting that first W, you know. And um, 
I knew what it was like to not have somebody I could, you know, call out to and, and get help. And once again, I got to give all my love and respect to Deagle. Um, I bumped into him early on and he helped me with my first ever raid. It was Crota. He then took me back to Vault of Glass and we just randomly started picking up people along the way and it just changed everything. And we became this dynamic duo that was on a mission to help as many people as we could. And, you know, he and I, and we're talking D1, this is where we met, you know, Crow mm -hmm. today's, and he and I were, were still close friends to this day. We're, we're actually going to go see Letter Kenny live next week. Nice. So, That's awesome. I mean, he's, he's just one of the best, most wholesome down to earth people. And, uh, whether, whether he knows it or not, I, I know I wouldn't be where I am today if he wouldn't have, you know, grabbed my hand and said, let's go get this rate clear. I got you, man. You know, and that changed everything for me. So that definitely oh, set yeah. me on my path of doing helps. I don't think that could ever get a better answer than that. Agreed. Um, what are your goals for stream? None. I, this was, this was never supposed to be what it is now. If that makes sense. It's not that yeah. I'm not ambitious. It's not that I don't want to achieve as much as I can. I wake up every day and I ask myself, what do I want to get done today? But when it comes to streaming, I, I went against the numbers to begin with. Um, I'm a middle-aged man. You know, I'm, I've just became a grandfather. I've only mm -hmm. been streaming for two years and we hit partners six months ago. You know, wow. wow, there is there is nothing about what I do or what I've done that should have put me in the position that I'm in. And so every day, every stream, I'm just thankful that I still have a button that I can press go live and that I can count on people to show up that I could put a smile on their face. So people always ask her like, so where do you see yourself in five years when it comes to streaming and stuff like that? And I'm I'm you know, partner with Rogue, we have sponsorships, we have, you know, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the only thing that really drives it home is my goal is my next stream. I want to make one person smile. And I keep it that simple because if I sat back and thought, oh my God, we're up to this many followers, we hit partner, we've got this many sponsors. If I, if I actually sat back and thought about that, I, I I'm, I'm afraid that it, it would change who I am and I don't yeah. ever want that. I want to keep it as, as modest and as simple as I want to make one person smile today. And if I make one person smile, my, my day is here, you know, it's fucking wholesome, man. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite stream moment? <sighs> God. Um, it's hard to pick, right? No, no, it, it instantly brought up a memory. And uh, as of right now, that one kind of hurts. So, um, oh, all right. All right. I, I got to I gotta put that one back in the closet because that, that one hurts a little bit. But anyways, we'll, we'll go with second. We'll go with second. Uh, okay. Second favorite stream moment is uh, I believe the kid, his dad came in and said, you guys have like an age limit. I said, well, first we can't ask for age on Twitch. It's, you know, against TOS, stuff like that. I said, but no, we, you know, we, we help anybody and everybody and, uh, come to find out his dad, his dad came on later and said the kid was eight years old. We did scourge of the past and destiny Two. the kid got anarchy and, uh, he just popped off random as could be. He goes, Oh baby, we're gamers. And that slogan <laughs> has stayed with the channel since that day. And I will never forget it. It was so pure. And his dad was so happy for him. You know, the kid was ecstatic. But the dad, and, and knowing that he had a safe place, he could take his child. It is one thing that we play with teenagers and dads and grandfathers. But when you have a dad that trusts and a community to take care of his kid i know you know what that can does to somebody to sorry oh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting a little choked up but 
to know that to to know that we were trusted in that aspect video game or not a father trusted us with his kid to take care of him and we did and the kid was happy the father was happy and you know that's that's definitely up there for sure is there um is there a clip of that saved to your channel um i know we've got a clip of it because uh it was recently used uh when i was talking about earlier about my community goes a little bit crazy when it comes to anniversaries and things like that. I think it was a partner thing. Um, a lot of people from the community put together this this amazing video about what the community means to them. I cry, dude. I I'm not I'm not too much of a man to say I didn't. I did. I cried ugly tears. But a bunch of people from the community put together this video about what the community means to them, and you know how it's changed our lives for the better and you know they all ended it by thanking me which i can't handle that well <laughs> <laughs> but anyways in the in that clip um somebody found that clip and they put it in there so it definitely exists and uh, if you'd like a copy of it i'll definitely uh i'll make well i'm sure it's on your channel i can dig it up yeah <laughs> it, it was phenomenal man but yeah that kid was he was one of a kind that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. That's the best, like, just making someone stay But to like go that, from eight totally get it. to 87 years old, we've had an 87-year-old man come in, and he got Terrible with us. What? Wow. Crown of, Crown of Sorrow. It was it was a community member's dad, and uh, he, he was one of the best, always in the channel, always vibing out, and uh, he, he had me take his dad through, 87 years old, I believe it was. And dude, you want to talk about just a salt of the earth. This man has seen some shit. He has lived his life, you know, and he was, he was just so human, you know, he didn't yeah. give a shit. And it was just, it was great because he was happy and he was just doing it for him, you know, and to have that, that's, that's goals right there. Not a yacht, not a mansion to just have that mindset that he did. Mm hmm. That's life. Wow. Oh well, yeah. I, I, right. I, I'm I'm left speechless. Me too. Holy shit. Well tell everybody where they can find you. That would be twitch.tv forward slash free ride games one word. Free ride games one word. Fuck man. Awesome. Thank you so much. What an amazing episode. Thank you. This, this has been an honor, boys. An absolute honor. Marcus, like I said, my utmost respect to you. You earned it the second we met. And uh, I feel blessed to have you in my life, brother. Seeing you in Thanks, chat man. and seeing my chat get excited that you showed up. It means the world to me. And uh, definitely hope to uh, do a lot more runs with you. And uh, maybe put a smile on your face occasionally, too, huh? Uh, hey, well, just so you know, there I would say 99.9% .9 of my life is smiling my favorite quote and i don't even know if it's a quote maybe i made it myself but uh smiling is a pathway to happiness and that i live by true. those words and and something a lot of people need to know is you don't need to be happy to smile what are you guys talking about in here find out next episode of working, working class, class nerds, nerds.